Next week on the Dissect That Film Podcast, we're venturing both to Elm Street and to Camp Crystal Lake, because it's a battle of the roots, the battle of the horror legends, as we are talking about Freddy versus Jason. Now you better watch, or listen, or I'm coming after you in your dreams. See you there. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dissect That Film Podcast, where we dissect the good, the bad, and the ugly of your favorite films and film franchises. Happy Friday the 13th. We're back. And of course, since it is Friday the 13th, we have to talk about a film that has the big guy who runs this day, Jason Voorhees. But today, we're talking about a movie that where it's not all about him. He brought a friend or an enemy, Freddy Krueger. As today, we are talking about 2003's Freddy versus Jason. I am your host, Brett Parker. Joining me as always, my wonderful co-host, Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys? Great. Good. It's been, it feels like it's, it feels like it's been forever. Like if we don't record exactly a week from the last time we record, it it feels like it's been a month. Like it's been like two extra days and I'm like, do I remember how to do this show? I do I remember like if, if it feels like years that I've talked to you guys, it's it's wild it's stuff. It's like when you go it's like when you go on vacation from work. Other than the fact yeah. that you go back to work, like do I remember how to do my job? I don't know. When you tear up while you're like you put your head down on the pillow and you just your tears just form in your eyes because you know that you have to wake up early and go to that place. I feel like I don't have to do that. I don't do that as much anymore because my job isn't uh, as shitty as the last one I had. <laughs> Where I'm like, sure yeah, it's clean. fine. Can make sure to clean your makeup and stuff before you go in. I do yeah. fix my mascara. <laughs> it's running. Yeah, all the crying. All the crying. No, I feel Leading cool mascara, which is a great song by Atreyu. I just want to throw that out there. Yes, it is. Early stuff, too. That's like one of their first albums. What is it? Suicide Notes and Butterfly Kisses? Yeah, I think so. I and got I into them. Going. I got into them a little later. For, I actually saw them with Avenged Sevenfold in like 2007. Nice. When they released their Lead Sales and Paper Acres album, which is my mm. favorite album from them. That's, That's when I got into them because the I actually heard one of their songs in a in a Madden game because I was I was huge into playing Madden back in the day. That was Avenged Sevenfold for me. No, had, no uh, Venge Sevenfold was the same way because I heard I think Backcountry was in a Madden game. I heard them a couple years prior to that it would have been uh, Unholy Confessions four. or something or chapter yeah, four. which was yeah. from Unholy Confessions. Yeah, yeah. And then Atreyu was the first stuff I listened to was Suicide Note and Butterfly Kisses, but then right after that they released The Curse and then yep. Let's Let's Sail and Paper Anchors. Backcountry was the first. CD you bought me. I did. It was for her her first birthday. We were together. I bought her. I bought that album twice because I bought it. And then lost it, so I had to buy it again. <laughs> I have it somewhere around here. I have all the Avenged Sevenfold albums up until I think uh, it was, I think, Hail to the King, because then I just lost interest in them because their music kind of lyrically went down downhill, yeah. especially when the Rev died. He was the oh, you mean he was the glue band. behind that band. Mm. So it's kind of like when. Uh... Panic at the Disco got popular and all their music kind of thing. Yeah, yeah and Panic at the Disco just turned into the singer. That was it. That was yeah. he was yeah. the only one left. And yeah. now he's even done. They they quit. Yeah. Or I think he baby. quit Panic the Disco. Oh, his wife had a baby, not him. All of this is relevant, everybody, because this fucking soundtrack for Freddy vs. Jason <laughs> has bangers. <laughs> I don't well, know. I just like, heard the music. I was like, oh yeah. It's one of the high points of this movie. I mean, there are a, a bunch of high points of this movie, but the soundtrack is just fucking it's a it's a banger. It's two thousand early two thousands metal alternative rock. Just it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's what you expect. Yeah. So yeah, Frey versus Jason uh came out August fifteenth, two thousand and three. So it's it would just passed its twentieth anniversary. This was directed by Ronnie Yu, who five Whoa. years ago. <laughs> Sorry, oh, sorry. Who five years before would direct another movie with another horror legend, my boy Chucky, because he also directed Bride of Chucky, which is one of my oh, favorite nice. uh, films from that uh, from that franchise. So Ronnie Yu 
did not know much about these characters, wasn't very familiar with the characters. He just wanted to make an all out bloody brawl. And that, that's about it. There wasn't, it, there wasn't anything special about it. He just saw the, the, he, I think he was familiar with who these characters were and just was like, well, yeah, we're just going to make it like a wrestling match. That was literally his, his view on what he wanted Freddy versus Jason to be. He just wanted it to be a wrestling match. And there are shots in this movie that look like I'm watching a WWE wrestling match. We were like, yeah. holy shit. Is he just dropping the knees? Yeah. Like, yeah. what's Freddie yeah. doing? <laughs> this movie is bad shit crazy. Yes. Um, this movie was written by Damian Shannon and Mark Swift. They would go on to write the 2009 Friday the 13th remake. So, which we liked. Which, yeah, which we, d- we covered on our last Friday the 13th <laughs> episode earlier this year. So, hey, cool. We got him again. Oh, yeah, we did. I keep forgetting about that one because I always remember the big one we did. I forgot we covered. Yes, we did. We have covered the entire franchise, not as in depth as we do with these episodes, but we and we're going to be doing it again when we cover the entire Halloween franchise. So very, very excited. Um, But yeah, we 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 said in that episode that we were going to go through and and talk about certain ones in the franchise as singular episodes. And, you know, there's many Friday the 13th that'll come up, uh, you know, you know, come up in the future and we'll, we're, we're going to have to cover another Friday the 13th film. We got a lot left, even the bad ones, the really bad ones. Yeah. Um, if we're here long enough, we'll just do them all. <laughs> yeah. So there were 17 scripts for this movie dating back all the way to 1993. Back mm. when, uh, Jason Goes to Hell came out because that was kind of the whole basis behind why Freddy versus Jason was supposed to happen. The whole yep. end of that movie is literally a shot of Freddy's glove coming out of the ground and grabbing Jason's mask and bringing it to hell, uh, which fun fact, uh, the hand that comes out of the ground is Kane Hodder's hand uh, wearing the Freddy glove. Irony. Yeah, right. <laughs> Irony. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, 17 versions of this film there were all crazy uh versions there was some ones that were i read them and went i'm glad they didn't go with that there was one where freddy was there was a subplot where freddy sexually assaulted jason's mom and potentially could have been jason's dad who yeah there was that's weird there were some weird ones that's weird and this is what we got. <clears throat> and I think the biggest problem with this movie is the fact that the dialogue is atrocious. Some of the worst dialogue oh, God, yeah. I've ever heard in a movie. And it, it it could be the factor of, yes, the script could have been just odd. And also the fact that they actually brought in David S. Goyer to uh, do a rewrite of the film, because I guess the final cut was like over almost two and a half hours long. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. We got to shorten this up because this movie's yeah. only an hour and 33 minutes long. Yeah. So they, yeah, they brought David S. Goyer in and we've talked about many, many, many times on this show to come in and shorten the movie. He added a couple characters. I think Gibb was one of the characters he added. Uh, and also the fat, one of the, probably the worst decisions of this movie, which we'll talk about when we get to that part of the movie Yes, but we'll blame David uh, David S. Goyer for that. I'm, I want to blame somebody for it. Yeah. So yeah, there was just it was just a mess. Then let's get to the conversation of Jason himself. So Jason, so everybody advocated. Look at that beautiful. Was that signed by? Is that Kane Hodder? Yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful for Aren't everybody they? watching. Uh, it's, it's a present. a signed picture from Kane Hodder to to Angela. And it was, in my opinion. He was at he was at a con in Pigeon Forge and a friend oh, of mine cool. went. We didn't get to go. But she got it for me. I think one of the best Jason suits mm. with the chain around his neck when his mask comes off and you can yes. actually see his face, it looks fucking great. And of course Kane Hodder's first movie, and that's when he's chasing after the guidance counselor and the the final girl's mom. Yep. Like that, yeah. That guard, that like cut, that saw for cutting off branches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it is. My birthday is it's the super cool. day before Friday the thirteenth. Yeah. Well, your day will be. It'll be the day before this video comes out, oh. or the day. Yeah, before this video comes out, your birthday. 
So yeah, so as I stated, Kane Hodder was everybody's choice. Everybody wanted Kane Hodder to be Jason because he had been Jason since what part seven. But Ronnie Yu wasn't about it. He didn't. He didn't want. Uh, he didn't. I guess he didn't Mike. like the way that Jason Kane moved as Jason. He wanted a more slow. He, he wanted what you see on screen in this movie. Jason is very slow. He's he doesn't ever run. He doesn't ever move fast. He's just a slow lumbering man. And so they brought in Ken Kins, uh, Killinger or oh, Kersinger. Kersinger, who was Kane Hodder's stunt double in part eight. Uh, he actually yep. shows up in that movie twice. So he is actually a, a diner. Uh, he works at a diner and Jason actually throws him into a mirror, which yep. I thought is yep. hilarious. And then he is he is Jason when he gets hit by a police car, and there's nice. a he was the yeah so he actually wanted to be the stunt coordinator for this movie, but Ronnie, you liked him so much, he decided to give him the job, and yeah. also Kane Hodder has nothing against uh you know the 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 guy who replaced him uh, yeah. it was more of the Ronnie it, a lot of people had issues with Ronnie Yu. Yep, he was uh, he was a big problem for a lot of for a lot of the uh, actors on this movie. One of them being Catherine Isabel, who played Gib, because she she signed on to the movie with a a clause in her contract that stated no nudity. And Ronnie, you tried to pressure her into doing nudes uh, a nude scene, but she was not about it. So they actually brought in a stunt a stunt double just to do that Body nude double. scene. And it's like, why? That's, I mean, that's what I said about this when I said, this is the, uh, AKA the booby movie. Cause that's, well, I even said that to Angela at the beginning. I was like, I don't remember her being naked in this movie. Like, I don't remember that shot at the beginning at yeah. all. Well, no, no, no well, that's not the it. same. Are you talking about, are you talking about the, the, the dream? No, no, the shower scene. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I I understand to a degree. I mean, who doesn't love who doesn't love to see boobies? But yeah. I have them. I don't care. Yep. Other people yeah. care though. I, yeah. He said who doesn't I'm just saying. I know there are people who don't. I know don't. I'm outnumbered. I know, I know who, there are people who don't. <laughs> just, I'm outnumbered. I don't like when I read stuff like this where it's like oh, I I don't sure. want to be nude and then it's like but and it's like no, it's not yeah. necessary. Like there yeah. There has been so many movies I've seen where it's like a shower scene and it just shows a, like a silhouette behind like a shower curtain. It's like, that's all we need. We don't need the above the curtain shot down. Just I felt like so I was unnecessary. Own, like... Right. Especially, especially when she specifically stated that it was. Yeah. She didn't want to. Yeah. yeah that's bullshit. Dude. That's not fair. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess they had a huge riff throughout the entire filming. This uh, took almost three months to film. Or almost two months to film. So oh. yeah, there was uh there was just it was it was a weird production, but it seemed like everybody was having a good time, except for maybe a certain few people. Uh Robert this would be Robert Englund's final appearance as Freddie in a film. He would come back in an episode of the Goldbergs like five years ago during a Halloween episode. It was the last oh. time he actually wore the makeup. Which uh the appliance they actually used a different appliance to do his makeup. So like in the original, I mean, he, this was his, I think eighth, uh, Friday film. So okay. it was, or not Friday film nightmare film. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. It was all different pieces and it was like very, very hot. It was, it took forever to put it on, but this one was a more of a kind of like a mask, but it still was like put on in pieces, but it was more breathable for him. Except oh, nice. when, uh, he had to do scenes where there was fire involved because I guess there was a story that the actual mask got like it heaved to his face. Like he didn't realize how hot like it was uh, during a shot. And then when he went back to his trailer to get it taken off, I guess it like was a fuck. It like was stuck to his face. Oof. Yeah. A lot of fire in this movie. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little a bit. weird plot point too, which I very weird. another questionable plot point. So yeah, we have uh, Ken uh, Kersinger as Jason Voorhees. We have uh, Monica Kina as Lori Campbell. 
Uh, she would, I guess, come out later on after this movie came out and just pretty much dash the movie, saying like the script was trash, and she pretty much took the movie to kind of get herself a bigger star in Hollywood, you know, to become something more. We have Kelly Rowland. To be honest, I don't know. I I don't know. She, I, I to be honest, I looked through her. I looked through the movies that she's been in since then, and. She was in a 2009, it looks like a 2009 remake of Night of the Demons. Yeah, it was a 2009 remake for, from the uh, 1988 Night of the Demons. So interesting. Uh, 40, interesting. Uh, she was also, she was in the, she was in the Never Sleep Again documentary, which is it's literally a documentary going through the history of the Nightmare on Elm Streets. She was also in the Crystal Lake memory. So she just coming in as herself, you know, talking about her, probably her yeah. experience on this movie. Uh, she's lent her. She does a lot of. Uh, she's done some voice acting. She's done a lot of TV work. Uh, mm-hmm. But to be honest, this is the only thing I know her from. And watching, I, I remember watching the clip from the Never Sleeps Again documentary, and sh- I didn't even know it was her. It just showed her name, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's Lori." Yeah, she looks. She looks different. Okay. Uh, we got Kelly Rowland, who plays uh, Kia. Of course, Kelly Rowland most known for destiny's child with beyonce uh, i guess this was filmed during a hiatus with destiny child they were taking a break so she did some some acting roles and yeah we'll talk more about her has a line there is a line and i cannot remember it and i'm gonna it's it's gonna bother me she says something and here i am i start singing one of their songs and i'm like <laughs> i forget what she says though to look it up we have jason ritter as will rollins his dad would be directed by ronnie ewan bride of chucky he actually would his his dad actually died the year this movie came out Oof. so his dad's been gone for 20 years i remember like seeing that on tv it's crazy uh we have chris marquette as charlie linderman who is probably one of my favorite characters who uh, uh jason ritter yeah he's married to uh Oh, um, John Ma- Ritter's son. Yeah, he's I, John Ritter's son, but he's, he's also like he's he's married to Melanie. He's married to oh, Melanie Linsky. You know who that is? No, no idea. Uh, she, uh, she. Have you seen Yellow Jackets? Okay, I have not. She's been seen in. A, that, she's been in a I fuck mean, ton of stuff. She was in The Last of Us recently. She's yeah. she was in uh, Two and a Half Men for a long time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We have she Lachlan Monroe yeah, as. That's what I know. Uh, deputy yeah she was in the first season of of that yeah um but yeah we have lachlan monroe as deputy scott stubbs sorry who he was in scary i think he was in scary movie i think so i feel like he looks he like he's yeah he was he was greg in the original dracula 2000 he's that no fucking... i just know him from riverdale yeah i was gonna say that's i think that's like what most people know him from now is riverdale I have Catherine Isabel as Gib. I she was in the um, Ginger Snap movies, which is like a werewolf uh, werewolf movies from the early two thousands. She was in. Uh, I know her from Hannibal, the TV show Hannibal. We have Brendan Fletcher as Mark Davis, who we've actually talked about because he was in uh, Violent Night. He played yes. one of the elves. Angel reminded me. Yes, because yeah. I'm like, damn, he sounds familiar. But here I am. I'm looking at his face. I'm like that. The face and the voice don't match up. I thought he sounded like Skeet Ulrich, mm. but I'm like that's not him, not for a fact. And yeah. uh, a very underused actor in this movie is Zach Ward, who played the brother, who you only see in flashbacks or in yeah. night, or like yeah. dream sequences. He he's one who played Nikolai in Resident Evil Apocalypse. That's but, why but, he looks familiar. Okay. But. I think when you see him, if you've seen a Christmas story, he is Scott Farkas. It was his first role back in 1983, which is crazy. And he came back uh, in a Christmas story, Christmas, playing the same character. Nice. No, yeah, have, he was in Transformers as well. Guys, yeah. We have Kyle Kyle Labine as Bill Freeberg, <laughs> who was just the J from Jay and Silent Bob knockoff character. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't need to talk about two just useless garbage characters, Blake and Trey. We'll talk about them more. 
Uh, they're played by David Cop and Jesse Hutch. And Pamela Voorhees is played by Paula Shaw in this movie because uh, Betsy Palmer was like, fuck this. <laughs> I, yeah. This looks like trash. <laughs> Which yeah. is almost exactly what she said. Not you know, word for word, but it's pretty close. She, yeah. She's like, I'm an actor. This is not acting. This yeah. is a bit uh, more getting the fuck out of here. Uh, but yeah, this is, of course, this, I mean, the idea for this movie was, has been, I think it was since 1987 that they had come up with the idea of wanting to pit these two characters together, but there was the big issue of the fact that they were between two studios. So New Line Cinema owned, uh, f- has owned the Nightmare series f- since its inception, and then Jason was owned by Paramount. But then Paramount sold the rights to just Jason, not the Friday the 13th name, to New Line. So they then made Jason Goes to Hell. That's why it wasn't called Friday the 13th. It was just called Jason Goes to Hell. And then we got Jason X uh, two years before this. And so that's where they set up the fact is like, we're fine. We finally got these two horror icons in the same house now. Now we can pit them against each other. And that's why you get that stinger at the end of Jason Goes to Hell. And but it was the fact that they could not get a script. They could not get a script that everybody could agree on until Damian Shannon and Mark Swift came in and they uh, ended up taking their their script and running with it. So this movie has just it was a a, 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 it was just a shit show trying to get this thing off the ground. And when it finally did, it made money because it had a 30 million dollar budget and made one hundred and sixteen point six million dollars at the box office. For a horror movie, that's some good money on that yep. type of budget. And uh, yeah, I mean, I remember I didn't see this movie in theaters because this I was still I was like when this movie came out, I was just about to hit 12. So, yeah, my mom was going to let me go see this in the theaters, but she did let me buy the DVD, which I don't understand why. But I remember no, going. I know, but I remember <laughs> going. I remember going to the FYE in my local mall. And uh, I just remember knowing exactly where I was going. And of course, they had their new release section, which was like right there. And I was like, yeah. sold. And that's the DVD. I actually had to watch this because it's not on any streaming services. And I didn't feel like buying it again. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to watch it on DVD. We watched it on our. Oh, Plex. Oh, you watched it on no. Plex. That's fine. Well, it was on a friend's server. Oh. We were like last minute. We're like, oh, let's watch fucking this. That's and all right. I, ha- I have this DVD. I mean, it still worked. Well. It still looked good. I mean, it's no, DVD absolutely. quality, DVD, yeah, DVD on a PS5, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I don't remember why I didn't see this in theaters because me and both my cousins went and seen Jason X in theaters. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why I didn't watch this. I mean, I was all caught up on both franchises up until this point because I, this was, you know, like I, I've said it many times, like my, my parents got divorced when I was very young. So my, and my dad let us watch horror movies. He didn't care what we watched, you know, it, it was one of those things where you still, it's just a movie. You know, you can't, don't repeat what's said in the movie. You know, it's, it's all a movie. And that's kind of, there was, there was little, a little rule book that went along with being able to see these things. But yeah. the, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies were like one of the first, that was like the first horror series that I ever watched as a kid. You know, I remember renting, I think like two at a time. I'd rent, you know, I, I remember watching a Nightmare on Elm Street for the first time when I was phew, way too young. And just falling in love with just the atmosphere of it all. And so I, by the time this came, that's why I was so excited for this movie. But I knew that my mom was not going to take me to go see it in the theater. <laughs> so I was like, maybe I can convince her to let me buy the DVD at least. That's, what's, that's what was great about having friends whose parents were a little, far less lenient than mine. Or more lenient. Or more, far more, excuse me, okay. far more lenient. Bonnie. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, I know who you're talking about. She let us watch uh, Exorcist several times well, before. Like, for me growing up, I talked about before, I didn't watch movies like this. Like, I just wouldn't. Yeah, I blame my mother again for terrifying me as a child. But as I've brought, <laughs> said multiple times on this show, I actually, the little bit of the story behind this is, this, this is be funny for people, those of you that can remember that far back, is I knew Jason X was coming out, and my cousin's like, hey, we should watch these in lieu of Jason X, which was, what was Jason X? 2001? 2001. 
So I would or, no, been, it was 2002. It came out a year before this. So 2002. So I would have been 17 ish when this came out. I'd have been a sophomore. <laughs> so I wasn't like I just didn't watch these movies. My cousin's like, dude, let's just watch some of them. Because and on, on Halloween they would always or uh, yeah around Halloween they'd have the Friday the Thirteenth marathon like USA. And I always remember the stingers because it was a guy just dressed up as Jason Voorhees. It was like he was running a marathon. And then somebody would hand him a glass of water and he would cut the dude's arm off. And he's like, back to the, you know, whatever marathon. Yeah. It's just stuff shit like that, I remember. But I, I bombed through all of them. But I remember the first one we watched, he's like, dude, if you're going to watch any of them, because I never grew up watching them, he's like, we've got to watch part six. That's why I love part six. Mm -hmm. And we just went through all of them, except part nine, leading up to ten, and then this one. Still don't know why I didn't see it in theaters. So there was supposed to be a sequel to this. It was going to no be a Freddy versus Jason versus Ash from Evil Dead. Uh, the only it didn't come to fruition, of course, but we did get a comic series out of it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know those stories, they're in comic form somewhere. Well, it would have made sense with all the dumb bullshit they introduced in part nine for Ash to be there. Mm. But whatever. Uh, Ken Kersinger was the is the tallest or at the time i think was uh the tallest jason ever on film he was six five i don't remember how tall the jason was in the remake he might have been shorter but kane hotter was six two but i think that was a they would they were there was like a rumor about maybe this is another reason why they picked ken over kane because he's taller and they wanted to make him seem more menacing in size compared to freddy how tall is Robert England? 5'10". It would have been fine. I would have rather seen Kane do it. No, I think I think Kane does a fine job. What do is put him in boots or whatever with the thicker sole. The, <laughs> the, the thing that... Okay. The thing with Ken, nothing against him, and it's his direction for this movie or whatever. The thing I have an issue with him in this movie, like you talked about, is he's... No offense, he's kind of sleepy, Jason. Oh, no. This, know, is, he, this is my least favorite Jason. I think of the entire of all of the Jasons. I can't say that, but I want. I don't know if I can say the, it. He's, he's definitely not. He's definitely lower tier for me. Okay, in certain love, scenes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the thing that I love about Kane Hodder's Jason is the intent with every move that he makes. Yes, yep. I think that's why he they didn't made, like him as Jason. And I, I love that. This because doesn't make any sense to me. He doesn't even have to move. It's his head turn. And he turn, turn always turns his head first before, before his body. he yep. yeah yeah like he just looks so determined and I wonder if that's why they wanted where Freddy's the more frantic kind of over the top character and they wanted a more <laughs> muted character for Jason to have like that counterpoint yeah I think it could have I I think it might have been the fact that you know the plot of this movie is spoiler this the, 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 the is the fact that Freddy uses Jason to kill like he uses him as kind of like a puppet to kill so that he can become take it get his power back and um i feel that the kane hotter jason like i feel like it just wouldn't make sense because he's so brooding and he's so fast and he controls what he does where this jason freddy is able to control him but only to an extent because he is jason for he's he's gonna kill when he wants to kill Jason yeah, Freddie yeah. only has so much power where I don't feel Freddie could have had that power over. Listen, I would have killed to see Kane Hodder as, as Jason's movie. I think it would have been awesome. And I would love to see Kane Hodder come back and play Jason again in a, in a Friday the 13th. Um, meet him. It would be, it. it would be great. And I love, I think that's the, those are, we talked about it in our episode, you know, forever ago when we talked about the entire franchise, the fact that like Kane Hodder is, probably the best Jason in the worst movies. And I think that could have been another factor in the fact that they didn't want to bring Kane Hodder back because all of his Friday the 13th movies weren't regarded as being good Friday the 13th movies. So I don't, That's I don't know. It's Not all wrong. hearsay. It's all what you read on the internet. You know, I'm, you take it with a grain of salt. You can't, you know, you, you really got to sit down and, you know, I, I'd love to just sit down and talk to Kane himself and, and ask these questions and get the oh, answers from him. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. are interviews with him where he has talked about this franchise and the reasons why things happen. So if you want to, there, there's the um, Crystal Lake Memories documentary, which he talked about a lot of that. And then you could probably just look it up on YouTube and find something with him talking about the whole, uh, 
you know, why everything went down for this movie. I don't want to get too much into it because a lot of play, a lot of podcasts and a lot of channels have already covered this movie, and I can guarantee a lot of a lot of channels are going to be covering this movie on this day today yeah, yeah. as we're yeah. talking about it. I know a couple channels that I think are covering this movie as well, so we'll shout you out at the end. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's um, well, let's talk about. I mean, I guess we talked about our experience with this movie. I mean, I talked about buying my DVD. You talked about your experience. Angela, what ultimately, what is your experience with this movie? Like, when did you first see it? Like, when, you know, when did we watch this? Yesterday. Really? This is your first I, time? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I And I know I've, I've said this before growing up. I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of this. I, I did sneak and watch stuff that I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. Got caught a couple of times, but, you know, I'm the baby of the family. So I think that I think that's an unwritten rule that you're supposed to do stuff you're not supposed to and get caught. Maybe that's kind of how I am. I was the yeah. baby, but I was. But I never got in trouble place. for it because you know I was the baby of the family. So that's how it worked in our family. <laughs> <Yeah>. Not a one. <laughs> hey, I did get uh, my TV privileges taken away. Stop watching porn. It wasn't. I figured out. So we had satellite as. Probably high school, like when I first started high school, and we had to watch all the Christian channels. Like that was that was it. My mom said a password. That was the only thing we could watch. I figured out the password, and I fell asleep watching MTV. Mm. And she woke up, and I was watching MTV. That'll do it. <laughs> but she changed that password. Changed before. the password. But when you have a password that's not hard to figure out, you know. Got limited yeah. options. That's fair. I mean, it was four numbers. I figured it out very fast. Um, I mean, my mom only wanted the best for for us, so yeah. Um, I think that's what all parents should be like, you know. I don't. I don't hold anything. I don't hold anything against her. Like I, I've made more memories watching movies as I've gotten older. I feel like I can. I enjoy experiencing that. Right. I hold it against her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was even there. You weren't there. I didn't even know you at this time. But I, I feel like the experience as an adult is different and more. I don't know. You'll probably like less shitty movies. <laughs> like watching them though like i want that i still want that experience but i feel like that's more of a but yeah i mean watching this i mean i made him laugh with some of my comments so i forget what i i forget what i had said we'll remember. i was very sassy during watching this we'll just remember. just saying <laughs> there there was there was a lot of things said i sang a lot of songs cuz you know kelly rollins in this so yeah. i was like I was singing, I was singing songs, but yeah, I, I, I quite enjoyed the, the whole watch of it. Just experience. the first time, just the whole first time experience. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. I'm watching. What's happening? This is why I, just, IMDb is IMDb up over here. Trailers. Every time she has it up, there's like trailers that play, right? Yeah. It's super distracting. And there's a fucking Dobby, a talking Dobby. And I can't think of anything, but what's on your fucking shirt. Movie dumpster. <laughs> Dobby. I'm an elf now, Mr. I mean, I'm a I'm a free elf now, Mr. Potter. Look. I'm a free elf, Mr. Potter. If we ever the sock. get <laughs> yes, the... my cum sock. Sorry, that's that's Sean's thing. If we thing. ever no, if fair. anytime we get let go at work early, like uh. we're over hours, you can go home early. It's always <gasps> Mr. Is giving Toby a sock. <laughs> always, always, somebody brings it up. It's great. Uh, I was just curious where, like, go, getting home, getting to leave work early had something to do with my semen comment. I was like, where's the connection here? But it's just the sock, so that's fair. <laughs> before we talk about the plot, uh, <laughs> there were two people who were up for director before Ronnie U was brought in. Rob Zombie was offered the, uh, to direct, but he wanted to direct House of a Thousand Corpses because that was his, uh, technically his first film, and that was his baby so he wanted to do that which came out a few months after this and then james wan was offered to direct but he was working on saw so that didn't happen so we got ronnie you well you well, see where glad. that went 
with him. No offense if Gunglad was a Rob Zombie, but that's just me. No, he would just mess with another <laughs> horror legend later on. You'd find well, out that well, four Jason's, years from now, everybody's got a bad childhood and everybody was abused and they all live in trailer parks and they're all just white trash Americans and that's why they're bad people now. He's from the South, right? Man, you broke. You literally just described every Rob Zombie part. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I mean, yes, that's pretty much the plot of uh, Halloween. Um, all right, well, let's talk about a plot, the plot of Freddy versus Jason. So if you didn't know, uh, Freddy is not a good guy. He died uh, because the town of Springwood turned against him because he was found innocent of uh, being a child murderer. And we get the really creepy. It's probably the creepiest version of Freddy that we've seen ever. Like the way that they open this movie with him, you know, having that one girl in the, in the, the boiler room or the shed or whatever, wherever he's at. And, uh, you know, he's sharpening his claw and he's licking the picture of the kid. He's got the book of all the kids that he's kid. Yeah. That was like, can we wait until the remake before we fully throw the fact that he was a, uh, a, a child diddler? Well, see that that's what they must have. Somebody's like, Hey, remember that kid thing they did with all, I mean, like obviously it was the basis of his backstory, but like, they really kind of touched on in Freddy vs. Jason, which just make that super fucking weird for this this 2009 so, version or 10 or whatever. Eight. They do they do show something similar uh, in one of the Freddy's Nightmare episodes, which was the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series they did in like the early 90s. Okay, There was an episode where it was Freddy gets caught, he goes to court, and he gets found innocent. And then that's when it turns to the, like all the parents of the kids you know, find where he's at and set him on fire. Um, but uh, yeah, this was uh, this was creepy. And then, of course, he yeah. he's doing the creepy narration over it and uh, pretty much describing the fact that they all all of Spring Springwood has forgotten about him. And so he has no power anymore because that was how he was able to do all of what he did for seven or eight or I can't remember how many freaking nightmare movies. There are, but because it shows all the montages of like all the different nightmare movies as they go through and show him dying all the time. Yeah, I, I'm curious why they thought to make his photographs lick and stick. <laughs> yes. That was really weird. Like, are they flavored? What is the, I know? I yeah. get what going for, but he just and then in the book, yeah, he just doesn't have glue. Like, what's what's happening here? I'm very confused. I, I, don't, I don't think that this that tastes like normal works. fucking people. No, unless he like gets off on the chemicals, it's like a like natural glue. Pulling. Yeah, I, I, I just licked my fucking palm right there. <laughs> yes, lick it some I more. I didn't mean to. This is gross. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he says, "I need Jason to kill them and make them remember." And he's got the pointy teeth, and I was like. I wonder if we'll see these again. Yes, you do, but not. But it's like one other shot. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do like A the really makeup. Interesting though. shot later. I, I do like. Same? I do like his contacts. I do like the look. Yeah. Um, I like the teeth. I wish they kind of kept the teeth throughout the entire movie. Yeah, he goes through like several different. Teeth, yes, doesn't he? he goes through a couple ones? different looks in this movie. Yes. So we, yeah, you have like you have like a, a normal looking Freddy, and then you get a demon Freddy letter uh, later in the movie. And you know, that's like, like halfway between where his teeth are kind of fucked up. Not the pointy ones, but they're kind of fucked up. Yeah. Joy, because it and makes him look more scary. Yeah. Well, he's a demon. He's a dream demon. Uh, so you want him to make him make him look more demonic. Yeah. Um. So yes. Yeah, so now we're at Crystal Lake, and <laughs> it wouldn't be Crystal Lake without some boobies. <laughs> Dude, but Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, that lady's just out here, like, "Hey, looks, just, looks around, nobody's around." Dead she's, of night, just gets fucking naked. At least this chick was waiting on something. She's like, "Mike, this is where I said, Billy, I get naked and take a shower." So, yeah. what I always like to do when we cover movies that are covered by Dead Me, I always like to cut, watch their episode covering the movie we're about to talk about because mm-hmm. I always find out some things I've never heard or remember from other things. I guess. She was in Final Destination 2, and she literally is in a scene where she just flashes her boobies. 
Okay. She's on the back of a motorcycle and she flashes the kids in the car. As I mean, they go. why not? Is she like, um, what's that? The Quigley lady. Oh, uh, Linnea Quigley. Not quite that prone, but she's like, she's just in a movie to get naked. Listen, <laughs> return of the I'm not sh- dead. Yes. Yes. I'm not, I'm not shitting on the lady. If like, that's what you want to do. And that, you know, that's oh, no, I, 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 I never shit on Linnea Quigley. I applaud. Her. I'm just con- curious yeah. as to why she put her shirt back on. Uh, to run. But she was yeah, scared. I know, right? But she ran and her boobs are like, woo. <laughs> and it pops out. And you're just like, what was the you point? <laughs> you can't contain those beasts. <laughs> so, yes, Jason chases her through. Well, actually, you get to see it, the whole thing. She Because she's skinny dip. She swims and then she's like yelling for her boyfriend. But then she she gets out. She sees. You don't see what she sees, but you know who it is. And She's running through the woods, and oh, you can never escape Jason to the point where he stabs her and sticks her to a tree, kind of like Michael does to uh, Bob in Halloween. That's way cooler. Sorry, guys. Well, this is cooler? I think. I mean, oh, oh, yeah. don't, oh, two, two different things. In the original <laughs> Halloween, it's really cool, tension-building, creepy. Mm-hmm. This is just Jason being a badass and, and stabbing a lady, lifting her off the ground and impaling her into a fucking tree. It's not just lift the guy up, stab. It's has the longest machete known to man because it goes through the tree. And the blood somehow goes through the tree too, which is I don't think that's how that works, but it's normal. It's normal. mm, Yeah. Redwoods. Let's assume it's because he's like it's not real. It's not real. It's a dream. I just assume that's why. Yeah, so you see it's it's the girl that he kills and then they kind of, she like morphs into different people and Jason's mom shows up and hey, Jason's mom tells yeah he's extra toasty though she looks toasty no he does oh, oh, yeah. oh he's Jason extra toasty. he's, he's been extra through a toasty. lot of shit except for when they ignore the shit that he's been through so supposedly this is <clears throat> this ignores all the Friday the 13th movies except for Jason goes to hell Because the fact that this is a new line cinema, Jason. So that's why he doesn't have the uh, axe mark in his mask. It's funny that they ignore those, but they include stuff. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's so contradicting. I I hear what you're saying. I'm just. Yeah, a lot of people are like, who cares? And I'll be like, well, that's kind of the point of the show. We like to nitpick at things that don't know. Yeah, we don't care either. We just want to point it out. Um, Throw it out the window. I could th- consider the, like the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. I consider like the Showa Godzilla franchise or, or the original Godzilla franchise. For those who are not familiar with that terminology, to just that loose connection yeah. between everything. It's not solid, but there's some loose connection there. But when you just take that all away or decide to ignore portions of it, I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, like it's not gonna fuck anything up to add the chain, to add the notch in his mask. It's not gonna mess anything up. Right. Like, how easy is it to add a notch in the mask? It's, it's like it's easy as one, two pie. You, if you have good enough special effects people. Yeah, it's easy. It's simple. Anyway. So, yeah, she's telling Jason to go to Elm Street because you got to teach those kids a lesson. And uh, then you see that mommy turns into Freddy. And you're like, oh, you used him. You get to see Jason come back to life. You get to see like all of his like organs start to come back to life. His heart starts cool. beating. Yeah, and he like rises from the dead. He, where, from your grave. So you see all of his organs and shit. And like, did he was the jacket like hanging up on a rock or something? He just like grabbed it. And yeah, like, he just picked it up. He's like, yeah, because he wasn't wearing that jacket when he was in the grave. Yeah. <laughs> so now but we're this on. Is the- where you see. Well, this is where you see the teeth change again. It looks like yeah, it looks like he has normal wood te- wooden teeth. Yeah, we're currently <laughs> watching it, by the way. As you yeah. Know. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that helps. That there. helps me. So, like, if I forget yeah. something, um, this is this is my this is something that I I just I guess ignore because it's like who cares? But all Freddie tells him to do is go to Elm Street. And if you can recall, if you've ever seen Freddy's Dead, there is an iconic scene where Freddy comes out of the basement and he goes, that's the that's the beauty of it. Every town has an Elm Street. And it's like, well, then you were very specific about which Elm Street this that Jason was supposed to go to. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you should have been like, you need to go to Elm Street, Springwood, Ohio, zip code. I don't know. <laughs> I'll give you the instructions. He's got like a, a note. yeah, he just he just gives a map quest. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was about to say that. He's just printing them off his <laughs> computer, you know. Uh, Jason with his lazy eye, which I wasn't a fan of, by the way. I did not like Ooh. lazy eye Jason. I know it's supposed yeah. to be like his. I mean, I, I, this is what people call him. So if somebody's offended by this, but mongoloid Jason, you know, when he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like, like backhead know, Jason, kinda... when he takes off the, 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 the mask there, that's kind of what he looks like. Yeah. So we get to, we're on Elm street now and we get to meet our core characters and they're just oh, they're all great. characters. We meet. Wonderful. Yeah. We meet Kia played by Kelly Rowland, Lori played by Monica what what the hell's her name? Monica Keller or something like that? Sure. Sure. Yeah, probably. And Gib. Kina. 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 Sorry. I'm not good with names unless I have it right in front of my face. And they're playing Fuck Mary Kill with the Three Stooges. And I went, Wow. This sure. is this is fun. And that is the, for the time though. <laughs> no, that I know. Was... That was a game, very popular game, but that's just like oh, yeah. I, I I was with Kia. I was like why are we doing this? This isn't seem fun at all. This is horrible. I still randomly get people that ask me that, and I'm like, I don't but then know. you're you're introduced to these characters. You're like, boy, I feel like I'm not gonna like any of these characters. But then her uh, Gibbs boyfriend shows up, and I went, oh, this guy takes the cake of garbage, just absolute oh. dumpster yes, fire yes. of characters. Oh man, Trey and uh, Blake. But you know when a guy's name, no offense to anybody out there who's nice, who's named Blake, but usually Blake doesn't just never gets associated with a with a nice guy. <laughs> no, and Blake's it's always here, some dude. tool bag Limit. in fictional work. Yes. In in the wait, hold on. Which is Blake her boyfriend or is it the other? No, guy? Blake was the friend. Trey was oh, yeah, the Blake's, boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, Blake's the guy who's sitting there in the chair rearranging his packaging. Yeah, and he's uh, talking <laughs> about feng shui, and I was like, is this bad boys too? <laughs> This is what Martin Lawrence right. talks about when he's high as fuck. <laughs> I like your feng shui. Well, and that was a more interesting feng shui conversation. <laughs> you he's got, drinking, so. You got a, but no, you got a beautiful like, fish. Big fucking wanted, eyes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to punch Trey in the face. A couple oh, he's times. the worst. It's a piece of God, shit. Babe, yeah. Don't make me ask you again. Don't make me don't ask you twice. Times. <laughs> That's it. Even later, I'm like, yeah. But even, even when he's a dead, even, sorry, even when he's dead, dead, spoiler, he's still a piece of shit. Yeah, he's still a piece of shit. But Bang! when her, yeah, when her friends ask her what she sees in him, she's like, I don't know, but he has a nice ass. What? That doesn't matter. <laughs> Somebody has self-esteem issues. Yes. 100%. Yeah, because uh, I thought I told you not to smoke when we were going to make out or whatever he's oh my god it's just yeah it's the fact that you know they go upstairs to have sex and so blake is down there trying to get with Lori, and of course kia's trying to help that get along and Lori's like i have don't fuck no <laughs> i don't want this yeah. and blake goes into the kitchen to get some beers you go upstairs where you know the two, the couple is having, is doing their, their fun time. And literally in the shot, Trey is just laying there like this. Like, yep. he is not enjoying it at all. I'm like, oh, what I'm the so fuck relaxed. is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> either, either you're just the biggest fucking piece of shit, which, which it, that's the right answer. Yeah. Or. Yeah. There's, there's, there's something no you're not telling people. Open the closet. Let everybody know. Trey just see that's all I'm gonna go with that New York is singing and she's doing all the work and he's sitting there fucking like a wet mattress <laughs> he's just yep <laughs> he's got his mouth open like he's about to fall asleep like okay. so yeah so this is when you get like the the fake jump scare down in the kitchen where Blake's getting some beers and he sees the back door open and the two the two girls go in there and Blake's like oh, you left your door the door was open but then we go upstairs and, you know, uh, Gib is trying to get all cuddly with Trey. And I was like, why? This dude, this is not a cuddly dude. And he's like, yeah, and babe, like and babe, he's babe don't you know I don't like to get touched after? And he's like, ugh. And she's like, well, I'm going to take a shower. He's like, good, because you smell like menthols. And it's like, you suck. We point out one thing. Does everybody notice the fact that the, remember the power is out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's so like got a hand out of right candles now. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Why? There's not going to be hot water. Yeah, that's a cool. Well, at least not shower. very much, unless they have uh, hot water heater. Gas. 
Yeah, hot water. It could heater. be gas in a newer house like this. Yeah. But yeah, they sure they have a hot water heater, but it's not going to last that long. No. Depends on how long she's in there. Anyhow, carry on. So. I like this. Yeah, I do too. So she goes in to take a shower, and Trey is, you know, he opens a fresh beer, but before he can enjoy that beer, Jason's like, what's up, bro? And then stabs him 10 times in the back. And I love how it shows. I just love how it shows it from the top and the bottom of him just getting destroyed. And then, of course, I I, I do love the after where he's like twitching and the beer is shaking in his hand. And then Jason just grabs both sides of the bed and fucking flips him up like a flip phone. So there's (laughs) let me make you an accordion. So there's some things in here that I, I, I do like that Ken does. So, like, there are some early Jasons, two, three, four. Four is, I like the guy that's in Jason, part four. But they just kind of do the role and they do the role, right? But there's, like, like Ken, like, after he, you know, folds this fucker, you know, like a newspaper, just, he, before he does it, actually, you know, he takes his machete and he stabs it into the fucking hardwood and mm-hmm. then folds him up. Yeah. Just a little shit. Like, they didn't have to show that. You could no. just set the fucking thing down. Nobody would have asked. And then, of course, she, I'm surprised she didn't. I knew she was hearing something, but, like, that's kind of a pink going into that floor yeah. with a lot of noise. Anyway. Yeah, because she gets out. Of course, yeah. we, we get the egregious over the curtain shot of her taking a shower, and you're like, eh, okay. I mean, as a as a 12 year old boy, I was like, I was a fan, but uh, it's watching it now, I'm like, <laughs> okay. You're like, um, you're like, um, you're like Leo Le- Leonardo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> when the boobs came up. Like, hey, he's seen he's seen plenty of boobs. Um, but no, and like the blood comes out from underneath the door. Yeah, she slips a lot in of it. fucking blood. Yeah, and she opens <laughs> She's up and sees like, him. What are you doing? Yeah, like I'm just casually out here, you know, bleeding everywhere. He tried his best to hang on to that fucking beer, though. Oh yeah, he did. So everybody freaks out. They run out of the house, and of course, there's a cop driving by right at that moment, and it's that Stubbs. And she's I like, oh, is there anything wrong? And she's like, what do you fucking think? <laughs> yeah, she's like know, covered in blood. Yeah. And you find out that Lori lives at 1428 Elm Street, which is uh, Nancy Thompson's house. Uh, it was also the house in part two. Uh, this is Freddie's oh. favorite house. That's the one with the blow up dog. I pulled through the window. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so the police very well want to keep it quiet. They are like one guy. You got the one cop who's like, oh, my God, it's happening again. Freddy Krueger. And then one cop's like, shut the fuck up, you idiot. <laughs> We've got to keep this quiet. It's, whose, it's name, Harry, whose name shall not be mentioned. It's Harry Potter all over again. <laughs> yeah. More. Yeah. This is just adult. <laughs> this, is, this is Harry. This is the day Harry was found, but it's Freddy Krueger instead. Oh, God. And He's of course, having a bad day, He's bald, no nose. And, and of course, Laurie is like, peeking in like what are they talking about i hear a name what did they say huh she's just reading lips yeah she goes to the police station and they're questioning her and she's like what's that name you said what's that guy you said and they're like i don't know what you're talking about she's like and she just puts her head down she's like what's his name what's his name and as soon as she says freddy krueger she then goes into a a dream i fell asleep fast yeah she fell asleep real fast after all this shit so this is where you get the dripping uh, the blood dripping down the hallway, which they actually tried to do it practical, but I guess it just didn't look very good. They couldn't get it to like land right and just look right, so they had to do the CG blood. I just, I think they could have, because we've seen blood drops done in other movies. I'm sure there was probably some reason why it didn't work, but it's it's been done before. Yeah. And I don't see why, I don't know. It just seemed like, know. fuck it, CG it. I just remember seeing, they, they, uh, if you watch the Dead Meat Kill Count on this, he does have the behind the scenes shot of them trying to do it. I'm sure there's a reason. I yeah. wasn't there. I'm just I guess there. I guess it was more Ronnie you going, oh, I like the like they showed him the shot probably of the practical and then of the CG. And he was like, I like that one. They're like, OK, OK, cool. Well, he looks like he needs something. Ronnie you based on how this movie goes, obviously wants more bombastic. Oh, he wanted this and, just to be an absolute brawl. Yeah, so probably just wanted something more uh, flashier. I can see the whole when the blood disappears, not being able to do that. CG. Why can't he make it disappear? I guess it's to make. But I feel like they could have like put something over the floor. 
that could have act not reacted like almost like water, like when you drop something in water, mm-hmm. yeah. and it makes that. I, I feel like they could have they could have worked worked with it. I just want to point out right now we were watching this. That floor needs to be rewaxed. <laughs> I knew you were going to point something out with the floor. But you kept mm. talking about the floor. It's my job. I'm just, just enjoy. I don't know if the little girl's um, makeup was. That was CG. 100%. That was CG. I just assumed it was. I just enjoy this part with her. Yes, this was creepy. This was a, cre- a very like creepy part. It freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. When they're in horror movies like this. Especially when you start playing multiple uh, voices mm-hmm. over top of each other. Well, so, you know, I used I'd... to watch a show. Well, I used to watch a show when I was younger. Shouldn't have watched it because it freaked me out and kept me up. But, you know, that that was me. I'm the torture yourself. You can go to sleep. You'll be fine. It was a show with it was par- it was like a paranormal show, but it was two kids talking simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Scared the shit out of me, but I would constantly watch it. But then I couldn't sleep. That's okay. <laughs> But yeah, you get the the whole thing where Lori runs. Yeah, she goes down. She finds the little girl missing her eyes. I do like the one where she walks by and all the missing kids poster, like all the kids look at her as she yeah. walks by. And then, of course, the little girl uh, explains Freddy Krueger to her, like the fact that he his name, who his name, you know, what his name is and what he likes. He likes little girls. And then she is outside of her house and you got the blood going down the door and then you got the the jump rope girls that have shown up in a bunch of the nightmare movies singing the, uh, you know, the the, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Yeah. We used to sing that as we jump rope and I didn't even know where it came from. And then Freddy just goes, boo! And then she wakes up. Scary. We then go to Blake's house and Blake is being confronted by his dad, asking him why he was over at the house. And of course you get like the response like, my best friend just died, dad. Oh, fuck you, dad. <laughs> you drinking again? You better watch it, boy. I'm going to bust your ass. Like, I mean, I get like the parent dad being mad, but like his kid is just went through some shit. So like maybe some insensitivity. Yeah. Maybe we get that from not the parents being kind of shit in this place, but I don't know. I get, I kind of get it though, because I feel like he's a, Troublemaker. Yeah. yeah. So he's probably like, yeah, he's probably a mystery. We just don't know it. And yeah. So the dad, the dad goes away and then he, um, Blake sees Freddy. He goes down and kind of, kind of confronts him. And then Freddy does like the the whole, like it was like a, a spirit type of thing, projection where he tries to stab through him, but nothing happens. And then, he wakes and then Blake wakes up to his dad just sitting next to him and he's like dad and then his dad's head just pops off and he's holding it and then he turns and there's Jason and then he uses his dad's head as a shield yep <laughs> yes <laughs> oh his, god his dad squirts like a little fountain though god damn like, no that was a mix of his dad and him because Blake was dead too so now we go to Weston Hills which is the uh the um the psychiatric hospital that showed up in nightmare three. It's called, and we meet will and Mark and they are given a drug called hypnosil. And I love how Mark, you know, he's like, Hey man, what does this do? And they're just like, <laughs> it gets you calm enough so I can beat your ass. And he's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But then will sees the news. He sees the, uh, uh, the news report about the incident at Lori's house and he, you know, freaks out about it because of course he and Lori had a history and of course, you know, will starts to freak out, but then Mark pulls him away and they have a conversation about trying to get out. Like will wants to get out to see if Lori's okay. I love how he tells the guys like <laughs> that one random guy is just like, Hey, I'm not a checkers guy. 
I'm yep. an Uno guy, so why don't you get the fuck up and go get an Uno deck? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I was prepared for the guy with the checkers board to just get pissed off and like hit him with it or throw it. Yeah. I was wanting more. Mark and Will are my two favorite human characters. They, I think they're the best yeah. written characters, and it sucks that one of them doesn't last long. They no, like shoo him away, and then you you see him for one other scene, and then it's it's over, and it's like uh, yeah. it's, it's disappointing. I wish it focused more on these guys. I wouldn't cared if they still brought in Lori. You know, yep. they wanted to make her the the final girl of this movie and all that, whatever. But uh, the fact is, is they got rid of one of the characters they should have kept throughout the entire thing, or at least kill him at the end. Yeah, but we keep yeah. the fucking stoner around. For a bit <laughs> he's not, sure. to be honest, he's not even the worst part of this fucking movie. No, he's not. He's not. I'm just saying, like, in comparison to character quality, even the the little nerdy dude we get introduced to later, which is... Oh, Linderman. Yeah, Linderman. For him. I know. Yeah, but he's, but he's just not... He's he's just there. He, d- he does not play into anything. No. Yeah, and this dude at least had some connection with his brother. I yeah. He could use Linderman better, though. Yeah. So, Mark does a whole monkey show to get yeah, to steal the key. Yeah, he shows his ass and does some crazy shit. And then he gets that? drugged. But yeah, he he steals the key to uh, pretty much to get them to escape the uh, the hospital. And they go directly um, to a school, which is just a perfect place to go. But we also see early in the morning that Lori's dad is been is this like new do you think he's been drugging her every day with the hypnocil maybe like who all the kids in in uh, springwood being drugged with the hypnocil that's why no one's remembering i know they mentioned they do point into this uh later on in the movie the fact that like the reason you know it, the main plot point the fact that freddy's lost all of his power because no one remembers uh so are all like no one dreams in the town or like or just the fact that the parents just didn't tell their kids or I don't know. I could see if the parents were like subtly drugging their kids. Yeah. For this reason, there was a. It happened in a movie earlier than this. The same plot point where they were trying to keep the kids safe. So they were like not drugging them, but mm-hmm. putting stuff in there like water and stuff. Yeah. Just to keep them safe, because they know what happened. Doesn't the government do that to us with fluoride? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh. So, pretty much, uh, Lori wants to go back to school. The dad doesn't think it's a good idea, but she's like, no, nah, I, I don't want to go to sleep, because she knows what's going to happen. So she leaves, and the dad is, you know, the dad is working with the police to try to keep everything quiet, try to make sure that Freddie's name doesn't get spread around the town, which... To a degree, like I feel like we're supposed to view the cops and Lori's dad as like bad guys. But like watching it now, you're like, yeah, I mean, it's not right to drugs. I mean, 100%, you know, it's not okay to drug someone without their knowledge. That is not okay at all. Yeah. There's probably a better way you could have gone about, you know, making sure people don't dream or, you know, making sure that Freddie's name doesn't get spread around. But I guess you could see him as a bad guy just because he does that. But I felt like there was other ways, but I also feel like they are not like completely evil people. Yeah. Cause they're like, they're trying not to spread panic because a lot of kids died a long time ago and they don't want that to happen again. Yep, but, yep. but here comes fucking Mark. Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger. Hey, everybody at school, Freddy Krueger. And they're like, who? And now everyone yeah. remembers Freddy Krueger. <laughs> You're like, pl- Mark's the bad guy. <laughs> Place and time. Place and time. Fucking Mark. <laughs> Way to go, dude. So they go back to school. And of course, like everybody's like making fun of them and shit. So they go. Uh, Lori goes back to school and she meets up with her friends. And of course, like everybody's staring at him because the fact that you know, people died and they find out Blake died and and then Kia throws out a Columbine uh, comment. I was like, OK, that's I don't think we needed that. I don't think this is. Nope. OK, Kia. Kia. 
all the time. They definitely wrote some really questionable lines for Kia. And if I was Kelly, I wish Kelly Rowland would have been like, I'm not saying this. But also, it's like the early 2000s where like this isn't even the worst thing that's yeah, nobody been cares. said, especially in horror. I mean, not not to belittle Columbine in any way, but it's just this is no so this is not that different than shit that is would have been said at school at the time. Oh no, absolutely not. No, because I was in high school at the time. It was so. only four years later. Yeah, that was not that was kind of inappropriate. But yeah, I mean, I understand. I get, especially from our age now and and the modern viewpoint. But that's shit that we would have said in school. Right. Like it's a hundred percent shit we would have said in school. I mean, it's no worse. Not saying make it okay. I'm just saying it's no worse than the stuff get, that gets said no. nowadays. So they find out there's a party going on at the cornfield, and it's run by um, Freeberg, aka uh, Knockoff Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. And then we have we have a Knockoff Jack Black, who's oh. all the other guy running this fucking party. Jesus, uh, I'm this he didn't start singing. <laughs> No, nah, this guy sucks. Time. This guy sucks. Well, he fucking does. Um, so Mark, then this is when Mark just strolls in and is just like, Freddy Krueger, Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. Everybody remember Freddy. And I was like, Mark, shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> even later, he's like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. I spread the word. And it's like, yeah, you did, you dumbass. What if I fucked up the parents playing? Like, you stupid. What are you? But anyway. So I guess Evangeline Lilly is in this scene. You know who Evangeline Lilly is? She played oh, Wasp weird. in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Really? She's just a student that's just leaning up against a locker in the background as like this whole conversation is happening. Thank you, Dead Meat. And oh, uh, the nice. Dead Meat kill count. So, yeah. In a world that has been completely divided for so long, two movie fans have decided to unite for the people and the betterment of mankind. One an action movie buff. The other, a horror movie fanatic. Together, they will try to bridge the gap of both genres into one podcast with their battle cry. Give me back my action and horror movies. Listen along as Charlie and Nate alternate each week talking about action and horror movies they cherish, mostly from the VHS era. Also, including some modern examples that felt like the movies they grew up with by answering the battle cry. Give me back my action and horror movies. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. Look them up on Facebook and Instagram. So this is when Will again shows up and Will and Lori unite. Like, yay. They touch each other's faces. They're like, oh, I miss you so much. Oh, and then she faints. And then Robert Shea comes out looking all disheveled. Robert Shea, who is the uh, founder of New Line Cinema, producer of every single Nightmare on Elm Street movie, uh, and brother of Lynn Shea, who would be in the Insidious movies. She's been, she was in the original Nightmare on Elm Street as well. Oh, well, I just got to get your screen time i guess yep so kia and gib they go to the nurse's office to be with Lori, and this is when uh kia kia mentioned earlier the fact that she she was asking about if she needed a nose job and i was like your nose there's nothing wrong with your nose like i'm looking at her face i'm like your nose is like perfect what the fuck are you I talking where, about i can see where she's coming from you know yeah they play into the whole female like body uh, image, yeah. Image issues. Right. I, so I can she asked the nurse, and this is when you start to feel you, you start to feel like something's up because she every time she talks to the nurse, the nurse is like, shh, and you're like, okay, fucking aggressive. The nurse sign, can't help you. Yeah, the sign on her desk says the nurse can't help you. <laughs> like, what good are you then? And uh, this is when she's looking through the magazine, looking at things, and um. What magazine is this in the school where it's just like, I understand it's a procedure magazine, but they just got titties in there. Yeah, like this well, is for the, play. it's for the boob job stuff, but yeah, I think that plays into what's going on here. I don't think it's actually actually true. there. Like, like, I don't think those images are actually in, in it. Okay. Just, yeah. I think it's, it's more in her head. But all I can think of is I think it's the TLC song. That's about. Don't go chasing waterfalls. 
Yeah, because it's it it shows the the one looking at the the magazine, or maybe it is the magazine that she's looking at. But it's all about all that. <laughs> There's a verse in there that's all about. Yeah. I was like, dang it! Why are you bring this up again? I'm reliving my '90s <laughs> issues. <laughs> But yeah, this is when Freddy shows up in the magazine. He's like, got your nose and pulls it out. Most of this is practical, by the way, the the whole nose removal. It was actually a uh, prosthetic nose on a green screen. And they just put the glove in there and pop them out. It's pretty, pretty cool. That is pretty sweet. I like that. I just felt like I was playing with my kids. Like, got your nose. Got your nose. Yeah, he's got a nose. (laughs) Anyway, oh my god! For those of you that get that reference, yes, I get it. Oh, so Mark uh, pretty much is like, we need to prove that Freddy exists. So they go to the library and they're looking through all like the articles and stuff, and they notice that a lot of things are kind of like are gone. Like they can't find yeah. much evidence on That's him. Shit. Yeah, and microfish s- people, microfish. Yep, yep. If you know and. That. He pretty much is like, I need to prove that he exists because I know that that's why my brother died. He didn't, you know, he didn't end himself. You know, Freddie was the reason he did it. So they get back to Mark's house and Mark, this is when Mark realizes that he's fucked up by, you know, saying Freddie's name to everybody and kind of putting it in people's heads. So it's like, ah, this is, you know, the town had a plan and I fucked up that plan. It's like, oh man, good good job, man. And so he lets Will borrow the van so he can go check up on Lori. We get to the cornfield party, and this is when Linderman stands up to Kia, because earlier we saw the there was an interaction between, because Linderman has a crush on Lori, and Kia's always stepping in the way, giving him shit and all that. And so he pretty much stands up for himself and pretty much, you know, it's like, the only reason that you say these things to me is because you don't even like yourself. She's like, and I just love Lori's reaction. Like, Oh, but she doesn't yeah, actually do that. But I was lady. like, God damn, <laughs> just killed you right there. So we then, it's so a will shows up. They have a conversation. They, you know, again, we have another reunion between him and Lori and Gib is fucked up. And of course you got Freeberg in line waiting for a beer fucking talking about, tray and how he got all sliced up and she gets pissed but she wanders off and then you got the dude with the glow sticks who's like ooh and you're like oh no that's a problem yeah, uh-oh. yeah. that's bad foreshadowing yeah so she wanders into the cornfield and she sees dead tray he's like hey, babe I've only been dead like two hours and you're already getting fucked up he's like come on and he's like babe don't make me ask you twice <laughs> Such a piece of shit. Even Dead Tray is the worst. Yeah. Uh, so she follows Dead Tray to the sh- the shed, but then it turns into a boiler room because it's again a, a scene where she sees somebody, but you don't see them. But then she's yep. like trying to escape, and she can't get out, and she's then then you see Freddy like in the distance. You can, of course you get the, like an like an. It's like an iconic shot of Freddy where he's like behind, you know, the, the steam and this stuff like that. It's recreating a scene from the first movie. Right? Yes. Yes. Where he's like, you know, gliding the, the claws along the uh, the railing and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. It's been and, a since I've seen the first movie. So. I, th- I mean, the way that I think the way that Robert Englund is able to manipulate the gloves and just make them very interesting, like he's very animated with his glove. I always found that great, like the way he's able to like tap them and, you know, he flicks, you know, when he flicks the pointer up and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I love the use of color when it was like with Freddie, it's all it's red. That's when, you know, like he's around. And then I think Jason is like a green and or blue. blue. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on, you know, the. Well, it depends on the situation. Yeah. Yeah. The party right now, of course, it's at night, but there's obvious blue hue. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The party is a lot of blue. So uh, we then, yeah. So of course, Gib is in a dream, but her unconscious body is laying on the ground, and you get the freaking this piece of shit glow stick guy who's trying to 
take advantage. And it doesn't last long, thank God, because yes. Freddie, of course, is trying to pin Gib in a locker or tra- he's just trying to chase her down and she ends up hiding in a locker and Freddie chases her. But as he's about to kill her, she gets killed by Jason. And I love it. I love watching Jay. I mean, that sucks that Gib died, but the fucking piece of shit glow stick guy gets killed, but he gets skewered and then fucking chases just fucking tosses him. him. Just, him. <laughs> just is Fuck that guy. I was like, bye. Fucking piece of shit. Um, to, to, to be, you know, thematic with that, he he took the um, pumpkin catapult. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Pumpkin yeah. Yes, pumpkin chunking. Yes, pumpkin chunking. So, of course, that this pisses Freddie off. He's like, "She's mine, mine." He's all pissed off, and yep. uh, yeah, he's like, "You're not supposed to kill them. I'm supposed to kill them." This is when you get a scene where I feel it's it's kind of torn, especially with the the way some of the kills look. But I think this whole next scene is fucking awesome because it's all done with real uh, real fire stunts. And it's the fact where he runs into fake Jack Black and random other guy who is just there. And he's like, you know, he's he talks like that surfer guy. He's like, yeah. You know, they're talking about like going to find a pig to fuck and yeah, this, no. yeah just the worst dialogue ever. And then, of, of course. course, the guy's like poking at his chest to the point where Jason spins his head around. Doesn't look great. Um, no. Pushes him over. And then, of course. The, there, he the fake Jack Black guy mentions the fact that he's drinking Everclear, and he throws the Everclear on Jason and sets him on fire. It's so good. This fire it's stunt just, materializes the tiki torch. From yeah, <laughs> like, Whoa. he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 overhead shot of Jason walking through the cornfields, just fully ablaze. And then of yeah, course the guy's running fun. away, and then you get the awesome like machete throw which like stabs him i love the fact though where they just squirted a bunch of blood in the dude's mouth and like just you can see it you gotta hold it in there buddy and as soon as we tell you you gotta (laughs) (laughs) so funny but yeah then of course you get the whole slaughter where jason is he's on fire just slicing dudes up i love how when you look really close there's moments where jason actually doesn't hit the person but he's the dude starts bleeding yeah yes yeah. it's what he <laughs> chops the, beer, the, keg. The, the keg slice yeah, yeah he's like, there's one where he slices a guy and you actually can see the apparatus that's underneath the the suit yeah. that yeah. it's it's funny it's funny but it's still a great shot i love when the beer splashes on him and take puts out the fire yeah yeah, yeah. oh man Water. it's fantastic <laughs> yeah keg guy i was like what's going on like i had looked up Right, right after that, I'm like, I don't even see anything happen to him. He's yeah, like, the, the thing yeah. was off, and they're like, ah, good enough. Yeah, yeah they didn't care. The fact that the, the it was the the fire stunts were fantastic, so it didn't. Even oh matter. God, yes, it didn't even matter. Because I had said, I wonder how long he was actually on fire in some of these scenes. Like I, I know fire stunts, you, you they can't be on fire for. But for so long, yeah, I, I can't remember the time frame. But it was like some of them were. It felt like they were uncut, and he's just. I think they said lumbering. I think they said the cornfield scene was like twenty five seconds or something like that of him walking through. I could be wrong. I I can't remember the time frame. And then of course, like the other ones were probably it was a lot shorter because it was just like. Slice, slice, slice. Okay, put them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So we then go back to Will. He's driving Lori home. Well, he's driving everybody home. And everybody's, you know, all freaked out from what they saw. And everybody goes home. And then Will kind of tells Lori the fact that he saw her dad kill her mom. Yeah. And, of course, as this is mentioned, the dad just shows up tries to choke out will yeah. and then of course you get the whole argument between Lori and her dad about like you know what happened to mom did she die in a car accident he's like of course she didn't he's like bullshit and you know the fact you know he pretty much hasn't told Lori anything like she didn't know that he worked at Weston Hills she didn't know that he was involved in like any of this stuff yeah. and uh, so she runs away she runs back to will 
and they determine they need to go back or they need to go talk to Mark because he's the expert on Freddy. And this is when they made a terrible decision. In I mean, this is I, I, to be honest, I like the whole dream sequence with Mark, but yes. I just he, they just they take him out too early, man. I was very disappointed. So Mark, of course, is trying to stay awake, but he ends up falling asleep. But he doesn't. You don't know that. You just realize it based on like the scenarios that is happening. And of course, it's the whole thing where like you, you get the shot where he gets he finds one sleeping pill or one pill that'll keep him awake. And when he closes the the mirror, it it Freddy's there. He drops it in the sink and he's freaking out. He's trying to keep himself awake. Then he sees his brother in the tub. And I like the fact that it goes from his brother's voice to Freddy's voice. Yep. You get the things that like attach to uh, Mark's feet that like keep him there. Yep. And then it's the whole thing where he's now in his bedroom and Freddy is just playing with him. He's like throwing him all over the room. He sets him on fire. The weird thing was, so they go to visit Mark. How the fuck did they know this was happening to Mark? Because they drive fucking, they literally like pull up to his house. Like they knew what was happening to him. Like there's no, there's no cell phones. They didn't get a call from Mark. Like I'm asleep. But they literally, there was the shot where he's like, someone please wake me up. And then literally the next shot is them like fucking crashing into garbage cans. Like, <laughs> Mark, yeah. Mark. You're like, how the fuck did you know? <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> I just assumed that they knew because he was the one that was telling everybody about Freddy. Well, I remember uh, the whole somebody please wake me up. I always remember that shot being used in a lot of promotional material for mm-hmm. the movie. See what like the trailer. That's what I started singing at oh, this time. Okay. I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> but I, I agree because because they he wasn't. Gonna, I I don't know if I'm trying to determine if Freddie was going to kill him in the first place because he says, "I don't want to hurt you or kill you. I just want you to spread a message for me." And he refuses to, and that's when he kills him. So I yeah. don't know if he was going to actually kill him at that point in time or just use him for more hysteria. I don't know. I think he just wanted to do what he was. He does to him at the end, but he ends up killing him in the process because the fact that Mark yeah. fought it. Yeah. yeah. That was Freddy's back. Just just saying. It was Freddy's back. Yeah. Very <laughs> true. It belongs to him. That's America's ass. <laughs> yeah. So then we're at the police station and the cops of of course you have the like the the sheriff or whatever he is. He's, you know, pretty much like trying to keep everything quiet. Stubbs, I guess, is new to the town, so he doesn't really know the history and what the hell ever what's going on. So he's trying to figure it out. He's trying to bring information about Jason Voorhees, and the guy's like, "Fucking shut up, shut your mouth. We got this under control. We know who it is. We've done this shit before. I don't need any of your information." And the guy's yeah. like, "Uh, okay." So Stubbs end up ends up finding will and the whole group there because they're all hanging out in the basement this fucking scene is not good this scene is just the entirety of it is just like ugh. but Stubbs comes to help because clearly people at his own job won't help him so yeah he's gonna try to help them so he tells the story of jason it's the whole you know we already know the story of jason the fact of you know his mom killing people because they've jason drowned blah 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 you guys know the story of jason or you should or you should yeah and you get uh, this is when like Lori is sitting on the couch, like everybody's sitting around the table and Lori's sitting on the couch. And this is when she get the line of Freddie was killed by fire and Jason by water. How can we use this? And I went, what? You don't. <laughs> why is this? Why is this important? <laughs> what? And uh, this is when like they do the whole thing about sacrificing a virgin and, the, and they look at Linderman he's like hey even if you pay for it it still counts I was yeah. like yeah. oh my god like, uh, but then they you know they all look like, at Lori and it's like oh we know Will. it's the whole thing was like oh you know you we know you never did anything with Will and then like Will's like <laughs> <laughs> and I was like what the hell yeah. and uh, yeah so they you, they think that Lori's gonna get like tied up and shit and then her dad shows up starts making out with her and I was like whoa I've seen this that movie a hundred times so I, a I, I gotta pretend to have those reactions like what the fuck <laughs> it's weird it was weird every time I've seen this movie it was um, even though you know yeah. it's a dream but then it turns into Freddy and then she rips Freddy's ear off and it comes into the real world and it's like oh shit we're f- we figured it out guys it's like 
that that thing that they've done in many of these nightmare movies, they're able to pull Freddy out of the dream. So they, so Will tells them about Weston Hills that they use the the hypnosil. They need to go there to get the hypnosil and to keep themselves awake until they can figure out what to do. So they go there. This guard gets fucked, by the way. He goes to because there's big banging going on at the door, and he gets squashed, flattened. They find a room full of people in comas, and they find out that these are the ones that uh, wouldn't stop dreaming. Yeah. So they were put into like medically induced comas, and it was all ri- it was all written off by uh, Lori's dad. Oh. Like wow. And uh, this is when you get Freeberg and the Freddy Caterpillar. Oh, which I really God. wish was practical. Oh, I know man. The, the scene is so goofy, but I, I, don't, I, I've seen this movie with it so many times now. Like I would hate if it wasn't here. Oh no, I, 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 to be honest, it does not affect me in any way. I like people have a lot to say about Freeberg, and it's like Freeberg's really not that bad of a character. Yes, he is a ripoff of Jay from yeah. Jay and Silent Bob, but. He's fine, but this whole encounter, of course, it makes a lot of sense with the character he is. But I just, mm-hmm. I, I really wish the Freddy Caterpillar was was practical because they could have made it re- look really cool, especially with how they made the um, the Freddy Worm from Nightmare Three, the one that like eats the girl, and then the, the whole. Th- You've seen Nightmare Three, right? No. Dream Warriors, really? I've only seen the first one. Oh my god! Same. Yep, well, I know, right? I'm going through that whole franchise at some point. Um, Absolutely. Next year for Nightmare on Elm Street's 40th anniversary. There you go. Um, we'll find an anniversary for something, by golly. Absolutely. <laughs> you know how this works. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. So, yeah, so Here the worm. That anniversary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he tries to chase after the caterpillar, and he goes into the room where all the people are in the comas, and they're all sitting up. Yep. And then... They're you mouthing the, stuff. Yeah, they're, you can't, can't hear what they're saying. He's like, yeah. one of them like goes right up to him. Yeah, and he's just like, and he's like, oh, I can't do that. He's like, I can't. I can't do that. We need that. And he goes over to the sink, and in the cabinet is, I guess, the only hypnosil in the entire facility. Oh, it has to be. It has to be. <laughs> but then the worm hops up, or is like hanging from the fucking ceiling or whatever, and like goes down his throat, and you're like. Well, I guess we're getting a shout out to Jason Goes to Hell with the uh, voodoo worm. Well, we get other references to it, too. So, Very of course, solid. he is now possessed by Freddy and he pours all the hypnosil down the drain. And uh, <laughs> Linden, oh, is it uh, Linderman? He sees it and the one he's like, oh, Freeberg, we need that. And then immediately turns around and screams because Jason's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Jason, of course, stabs a uh, like a panel and starts electrocuting him, and then he fucking just throws his arm out and electrocutes Stubbs. And I was like, oh man, that was another Stubbs. character who's not the worst. Like he was actually an yeah. okay character, and they just take him out. Yep, I agree. George Bush. It's like right. It's like <laughs> characters that like have potential to do something or be yeah. interesting just get off. Yeah. So. Freeberg Freddy loads up a couple syringes full of drugs and waits for Jason in the hallway. And I just love how everybody's trying to get him to come. And he's just like, let me do this bitch. Yep. And they're like, look, look what he's got. And of course he, uh, he stabs him with the drugs, knocks him out, but he get, but Freeberg gets uh, sliced in half. And there's actually a moment you can tell that Freddy is not possessing him anymore. Like right after he drugs him, I think Freddy leaves him because he kind of like comes to as he's being like cut in half. I thought that was a cool little touch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Jason is now in dreamland. And this is when we get, you know, Freddy, of course, it's his world. So he is able to play around with everybody. So, yeah, of course, he, had, he he tries to make it look like Jason has the upper hand, cuts off both of his arms, but then, of course, he can grow him back, and then he fucks with Jason. He, like, fucking beats the shit out of him. He uses him like a pinball, and, of course, you get the sound effects, too, as he's being flung around. I said that. I was like, oh, he's playing pinball, and then it made the pinball sound. Yeah. I was like, damn it. 
So this right. was so I think this was actually the the shot that they did practically. They actually had a guy up on wires and stuff, and Ronnie Yu saw it all in CG and was like, "That one looks good." And the guys were just like, oh, "Okay." Sure. <laughs> well, it's like the cop that, that that dies or the security guard gets crushed by the door. Yeah, with the blood coming out from underneath the door could have easily been practical blood, but they just CG'd it. Yeah. Obviously, we all know just looks like shit. Does not age well. So, and I, I do love the fact though after uh, when he hits the final thing and he falls and he's just like tilt. And I was like, ah, yep. pinball joke. Um, but then you know Jason gets up and it starts to like Jason. They they fight a little bit more. And then the pipes start to burst and water starts squirting out and the color changes. It goes from red to like a green or like a bluish green. And this is when you get the dumbest fucking plot point of this entire movie. Thank you, David S. Goyer. Yeah, thank you, guys. Fucking whoever wrote this is like, oh, we should keep this in. This makes sense. Should be hitting the head with a fucking brick. Right. This is written. This was written by somebody who's never seen a Friday the 13th movie. Uh, clearly. So literally jason is afraid of water and it's like what what the dude how many i think he's walked out of water come out of water in almost every friday at least i know he has a kill at least on water in most of the friday the 13th even before he becomes a zombie yeah, even in the first couple, he had the infamous, you know, jump scare from the lake. Right. Times. But now we're making him afraid of water. I know it All doesn't, right. dude. Okay. And at this point, he's already undead. What does he got to be afraid of? Right. What? Like exactly. What? Like that's oh, what I'm talking about. Where they where they cherry of anything. Where they cherry pick bits of the continuity, I, and it just it just bothers. And then this is for me. Like I said, I I'm always a Friday the Thirteenth fan. It's my favorite slasher franchise. And like it just that pisses me off the most. Right. Wasn't and, he buried underwater? Well, well he literally like, uh, sits underwater all through between seven and eight, right? Yeah. Yo, he, no, he, yeah, he gets. Well, he gets. Oh, six twice. and seven. Six. Right? He gets dragged yeah. under, yeah. and then he gets crushed by the dock in seven into right. eight. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It's weird. It, it, it's, it's very fine. weird. And the thing is, is I, I know. No offense, but New Line's going to show favoritism to Freddy anyway. Yeah. Because it's their, that was theirs first. It's just how it's going to work, right? But ultimately, you know, they don't want either one to look bad at the end. It was just a really dumb choice that didn't make any sense. They're like, how can we make him weak? Just believe it. You can figure something out. If they just leave him drugged for half the movie. Freddy didn't have to do anything to his dreams. Just leave him drugged for, like, a portion of the movie. And then you make him ineffectual and let Freddy do his thing. I do like the fight between both of them. Yes. But it's the, the certain points that they point out. I was like, I mean, this is, fights are fun. this is what everybody yeah. wants to see. Everybody wants to see Freddy fight Jason. And so yeah. when, and, and the, and the great thing about this movie is anytime you see these two fight, it's a good time. Yeah. It's very creative. It's not, and, and they don't make it even because they know, especially when we get to the parts where, Freddy is in the real world. Freddy is at a very big disadvantage because he's a lot smaller. And now he's, he's a human pretty much well, where Jason is this like undead zombie, you know, monster. Um, so of course the water causes Jason to turn into a little baby boy. And, uh, of course he takes off the mask. You get the line. It's like, Oh, a face only a mother could love. Swampy boy, Jason, swampy boy, Jason. Yep. Why did that have to come in? Of all the things to take, bullshit things to take from Friday the 13th movies, why did you bring Swampy Boy Jason in? <laughs> uh, people like, oh, well, it's of all of everything. Out of people might be like, well, it's a reference when he came out of the first one. Well, you should ignore that because that's not fucking part of the continuity if it's just the new line shit. The only <laughs> other movies you could bring up are what, eight? That stuff is dumb as shit. Oh, God. But anyway. So dumb. Freddy's, Freddy's face is only a face a mother could love. Just yeah. So when before he got burned, Rod, Robert England's a handsome gentleman. Yes, he is. I actually just yes. watched a movie with uh, Robert England uh, yesterday. Wishmaster? No, it was a new. It was a brand new one that he was in. Him, Dan, uh, Daniel Harris, and uh, Bill Mosley. Oh, nice! What was it? It was called Natty Knox. 
It's on it's on Tubi. Hmm, not heard of that one. It just it literally just came out. I think it only came out like a week or two ago, maybe. There's a few other things we have to watch. It's only like it's only it's it's like an hour twenty five. It's it's pretty good. It's nothing to write home about. But when Robin England's on screen, it's fucking amazing. And I love Daniel Harris. She's uh you know who Daniel Harris is, right? Sure. She no. played Jamie in Halloween four and five. She was Jamie Jamie Lloyd. Oh, okay. And she would come back and play Annie in Rob Zombie's Halloweens. I feel bad for that girl. Anywho. Oh, so they are in the van bringing unconscious Jason back to Crystal Lakes to give him home field advantage. Yeah. Cool. Sure. I'm concerned as to how long they were in this van because how many syringes that they have of the tranquilizer? Unspecified amount of time. I just want to point out the fact that Springwood is in Ohio and uh, Crystal Lake is in New Jersey. So this uh, is okay. at least like they a were... five, six hour drive. Okay. okay so they fair. were in for a while. It was just the fact that it felt like Linderman was giving him the way too fast. Time. How long does like, it last? Like, he's like, oh, that's oh. it, guys. And I was like, you just gave it to him two <laughs> minutes ago. What are you doing again? <laughs> that is the question, though. With Wait him being him dead, twitch. how long would it last? I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know. All, all you need is a twitch. Give it to him again. Okay. Yeah. He's, dead. he's out. Conscious, unconscious. So, Freddy hops into Jason's mind. Uh, this, is a, this is always a shot that always would give me squirmy. Was uh, the, the shot of him putting the uh, yes. claw through his fucking temple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And at this time, Lori also goes under as well. And she is at Camp Crystal Lake. She's seeing baby Jason being bullied by all the kids and all the camp counselors are like making out just like the fact that this my wife laughed at this like she walked in on the part where it was the counselor just fucking the girl yes the porch. she's like oh <laughs> then it turns into Freddy are Freddy's. you coming I can't help it this broad <laughs> dead on her feet I was fucking dude I was like I yes it. fucking yes and it's like bunny <laughs> rabbit style like dude mm. he's just going at it man oh it just <laughs> Oh my god! It was. I was hoping a, your wife had watched. It this was a great movie. reaction. Yeah, little, just of like, I'm a oh. little bummed. It was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was moments she would look on and be like, "What is this?" It's a oh. movie. So we then, yeah, you see how Jason died, and then of course Freddie. You know she. You know Lori's trying to help him, and then Freddie comes up and pushes him under the water, but then Jason. It, like for one, and this was another weird thing where he's drowning, like the water starting to bubble up out of his mask. Like he's drowning, we can't let him die. It was like he's already dead. No. <laughs> he's a zombie, man. Well, look did you that. not well, see the beginning of this movie? <laughs> well, also when um when they're the kids are picking on the Jason, they put the bag on his head. Oh yeah, which is a reference to it too. Uh, too which, yeah. Po- to, well, yeah, and like why why would you do that? Like uh, it's not part of the cut. Co- I know, I get it. Yeah. But anyway. And then, like, she doesn't realize it's Jason that they're picking on until he comes out of the water, yeah. which I yeah. guess is supposed to be a reference to when he come out of the water at the beginning of the first one. Mm. I don't know. Anywho. So, Shit. yeah, so they, so Kia's going to give a mouth to mouth, and I'd be like, no, thank you. But before she can. Gross out moment, just yeah. For giggles. So I, I do like the fact when she's, like, slowly removing the mask, and it's just, like, bubbling out of his mouth. I will say the shot of him laying there and like the water just like out of his mouth. I think it's, it looks neat. Like, yeah, it's, it's cool. Well done. So, didn't see but, but <laughs> she would have been grossed out long before she had to pry the mask off its face. She would have smelled something. Yep. <laughs> so he's he's a little. Uh... So he wakes up, and of course this caused chaos. They crash the van. <laughs> Jason just flies out. Yeah, in the most comedic way, bro. He's just Ooh. like, ah. <laughs> you know, when the gun he's goes off that Linderman has, him. I'm surprised somebody didn't get shot I, and killed. Like, just off another character ran. I completely forgot he even had a gun. To be honest, yeah. I don't even who gave that. him a gun? And yeah. he's like, he took like, it from the dead cop. He's like, <laughs> he took it. I'm like, still, who let him have it? So why did Jason fly out like that, but not Kia or Linderman, who were not <laughs> in the they they weren't sitting in with a seatbelt on? And Lori was back there too. She didn't fly out of the van. He's a brick. Just Jason. Just Jason. Just bye. 
yep. <laughs> just fucking out See of later. there, man. Oh, I man. So, uh, and of course, when Jason, because Jason wakes up, he disappears from that dream world and it pisses Freddy off to the point where we get this awesome fucking shot of Freddy shooting out of the water and landing on the deck. And yep. you get, this is when you get Demon Freddy. Where he's like yes. feet red, he's got the pointy teeth, and he looks very demonic. And uh, oh, I also got to I also got to point out the fact that when they're gonna give Jason mouth to mouth, that Linderman can't do it because he has asthma, and it just made me think of Deep Rising. <laughs> yes, can you just get asthma? He's like, I just love when when Will's driving. He's like, yeah, he has asthma. <laughs> like, ah, oh, Deep Rising. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, so good. Can we cover that again? Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Go for twosies. So, Freddie then transports Lori to her house, and it's kind of like back in time. So, so she's like in a nightgown, and she is uh, seeing her dad. It's that vision again where she's seeing her dad with the knife going into their bedroom, and you're seeing the mom, and she's all bloody. And you think that the dad is going to kill her, but then you find out Freddy is the one that was was doing it. And then you get the line. It's like, you know, I've I've always loved the whores who live in this house. Yeah. Connection. So this is when you get the really uncomfortable moment of Freddy fucking with Lori doing some things. Some uh, I do like the the whole thing where she's trying to run away and you get the uh, the floor kind of rolling up. And like, yeah, oh I was like, man, I'm just like my ankle. I was like, ah, yeah, because it like, god damn, you can watch your feet get tied up by yeah, it too. Like, oh. first and <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it wasn't just you know, you see the floor doing the wave behind her, yeah. but then it just like snaps up in front of her and like claps her whole ankle. Yeah, I'm like, that couldn't have felt good. Yeah, so the gang goes to Crystal Lake and they go into a one of the cabins and they see Jason wandering around and then he just bursts through the wall. He's just fucking bah and Lori won't wake up and like a fire and Jason starts the fire in the cabin by the way. <laughs> he just knocks shit over, knocks gasoline over, it gets lit and so Lori's arm falls into the fire, it wakes her up and it pulls Freddy out and this is when you get the fucking matchup where Freddy knows he's in the real world. And I love his reaction when he turns and sees Jason. He just, he doesn't say it, but usually he's like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. This isn't good. Yeah, because he's like, oh, no. <laughs> so, never mind. Just go ahead. I just don't like the whole fight before it happens where Jason puts his um, his machete knife thing into the table and oh and he can't there. oh he can't get it out yeah i'm like he's and he's just and he's just, and you get yeah because because then you get like three characters who just get thrown against the same wall yeah. like i think yeah. kia gets thrown against the wall will gets thrown against the wall and then linderman gets thrown against the wall but he gets he gets the freaking coat hanger through the back and you're like oh i think it's yep. um i don't think it's a coat hanger i think it's the flag holder because he holds oh is that what it was flag off i think it's where the uh, flag oh that's is. right he stabs jason with the flag and that's when he fucking ah and yeah. like why is everybody trying to fight him and what about when uh, well, they're like <laughs> yeah and will will fucking gets gashed in the back pretty good but it doesn't seem yeah. to off him yeah yeah i didn't i i agree angela i didn't really like how it was like the same fucking scene over and over again I'm like, why the hell are you trying to fight him? First person didn't succeed, so run away. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Lori wakes up, brings Freddy out, and this is when you get the fight. Um, of course, Jason has the upper hand because uh, Freddy is now kind of he's pretty much human now. Um, well, he he does, but the only problem is is Jason is so slow in this movie. Yeah, and Freddy's like. Well, borderline martial artist. <laughs> you, you you mean You've when never he seen Freddie like, like this dick, before? Oh my god! Like, nope, well, doesn't hurt. When, so. when Ronnie, you said I want to make this look like a, a wrestling match, he fucking succeeded because there are mo wrestling moves in this. Like, there's the thing where like Freddie like grabs his shoulders and it's just constantly like 
this man, like if this was real life, this man's kneecap would be shattered because of the amount of knees he was just given to Jason. Well, well um, one of my favorite bits, and this is like a hundred percent like action, martial arts, over the top stuff, is when he <laughs> throws Freddy out the window and just drags him along the side. Of that. <laughs> I fucking love this. It has so honestly, good. dude. No place in this movie as what it's supposed to be, it's, it's but great. it just it's it's enjoyable as shit. I'm like, well, he's he's thrown in through all the you know supporting beams. Here, the roof's gonna collapse on him. I mean, Jason toss like when they get to the outside that cabin, he picks Freddy up and just tosses him through the roof of another cabin. Yep. <laughs> Here we she, go, pumpkin chicken number three. Oh, actually, we were shit, watching man. this and. Uh, Angela said something about, I was like, what about, you know, why doesn't the roof fall on him? And then he goes to the yeah, roof. He goes like, to the yeah. roof. Like, yeah. Literally right before he just goes to the. I mean, he took, he took away like half the support beams of this <laughs> cabin. <sighs> so it makes me think he's like, has a picture on MS Paint and just like deleted the middle yeah. section. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then uh, we, then we see Kia and Linderman. Linderman is in rough shape and he just dies. He just dies of his wound. From the uh, flag holder or whatever the hell that thing was on the wall. And then we get the worst. Oof, this is a, <laughs> a rough segment of this movie. I know what it is. This is, a, this is, is. a segment that uh, Damian Shannon and Mark Swift have stated for years. They did not write this part. And that is the interaction between Freddy and Kia, which so... I, I don't, I'm not defending this scene. The scene is not good. <laughs> it's just not a good scene at all. And, you know, of course, she uses, you know, she calls him the F word and not the F word that we say a lot on this show, but the other yeah. one. And he has the line of, uh, what is it? Uh, what What is the line? What does he say to uh, her? Dark meat. Oh, yeah. Which is a play, which is a play on a line he has in another nightmare movie where he says, ah, fresh meat. Uh, but they had to put the dark meat. I was like, oh, God, this is a David S. Goyer line, isn't it? It's a fucking, uh, oh, God. I will say, though. She gets what's coming. I, I, I get why people won't, especially in this day and age, wouldn't like the dialogue that is written in this scene. I do love Robert England's facial expressions as Freddy yeah. in this scene. Like, at the beginning, because he's torn between going after the other two and <coughs> her... And then he's like, like he can't. He just the temptation is too strong to fuck with this girl who's talking shit. But it's the whole thing with his claws. He he's yeah, like, where he's like pointing at her and yeah, stuff like that. And, but even there's times where he's like walking towards her and he's just got the biggest shit eating grin on his well, yeah. face. Well, too. she's also like making fun of him. He's like, why why a Christmas sweater? You know why? Uh, you know what's with the butter knives yeah. and stuff? Like those yeah, lines yeah. are fine. Like if she's talking yeah. shit to him. But yeah, it was the the dark meat line, and then of course she calls him, you know, the f word there, and uh, it's just a, it's kind of a, it's kind of an uncomfortable spot, especially watching it now. I guess it, you know when growing up in that time, you know, it doesn't phase you because I feel like you hear it all the you you heard that word all the time, or yeah. it just it it like maybe I just didn't understand why he said it that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to, we'll, we won't sit on the scene for too long, but she, yeah, she, of course, this is the scene where she's talking shit to Freddie. And then of course, Freddie like points behind her and it's Jason. And <laughs> this is the fucking <laughs> she gets hit Dude. with his machete and she turns into a rag doll. She hits that tree. Oh, she's like, Whoa. doesn't even get cut in half. Just gets <laughs> launched into a tree. It's almost it's like so he took funny. the end of his machete oh. and just like of one end and just hit yeah. him with it. Yeah. That's what it's, it seemed like. It's He's so like, good. I ain't going to waste time on you. Oh, it's so great. So this is when you get the, the awesome scene in like the weird quarry or whatever the hell this area is where Freddy like hits him with some uh, air tanks and and the torpedo. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great. It's like, zing, zing. yeah, this is where I thought about the thing at the one scene. Um, fetch me the booze. We just wa recently watched it. Charge me the booze. Oh, make me a sergeant. Charge yes. me the booze for them. Yeah. This is this is all I could think of. <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought about it during this <laughs> this scene. 
and the torpedo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just love that. But just, it's good. He funny, he can't help but be Freddy and shit. Yeah. Like oh, that. yeah. But the funniest thing is he still seems like he can teleport because he goes from being down by those tanks all the way up to the top where he, he oh, yeah. slices those uh, rebar and it just you know goes through Jason and uh, then he like unleashes the fucking whatever the hell that thing was that was like hanging there and it's, yeah, like, I don't know bouncing around like. and Some big metal thing. The rebar is cool. Yeah, and now Fre- fucking leg. And Freddy tries to hit him with a with a mining cart and it gets stuck and then he falls onto the swinging thing and I love it. He's just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, it seems like he still has some power, but it's really limited. Yeah. And you know, reality. I mean, he's in he's in Jason's. He's world. in Jason's well, I mean, world now, yeah. Well, yeah, well, especially like what we're getting to here in just a moment. Because when Jason was in his world, he was at a disadvantage. Yep. But he was still strong. Just not as strong. Well, I mean, to be honest, in this fight, outside of what we're going to get to shortly, like, Freddy is such a fucking advantage in this fight. Like, he's just whooping Jason's ass yeah. almost this entire fucking fight. Because he's so Again, much faster. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course they can't They can't make him look bad. And no offense, yeah. I know it's Robert England and all this stuff. I refuse to believe he'd be, he would be physically stronger than Jason in no. real life, even no. having some of his powers. But yeah. anywho. So yeah, they're you know fighting, and then the cart comes unstuck and hits them both and sends them flying to the final stage. It kind of feels like a video game, yeah. <laughs> like they're in just different stages of the game, and yeah. they're, they're fighting. Here's the final stage. It's uh, on the dock, and yeah. uh, this is when uh, Jason gets the upper hand, but then Freddy cuts off his fingers, dropping the machete. So now Freddy's got both the machete and his glove. So he's just hacking the shit out of Jason. Um, but then, Not and then... Jason's fingers fall off one by one. Yeah, just like... Just like <laughs> and then oh. he just looks at him like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> Lori, Lori and Will decide they're going to set the dock on fire. They're just gassing it up. There's propane tanks behind them. And uh, this is when they try to make Lori look really badass. And, and to yeah. be honest, she kind of does. People really don't like this character. I don't like after this oh, most recent watch. I don't think she was really that bad of a final girl. Um, I just don't think the whole arc of her story was told very well. Yeah. Um, I think to be honest, I think uh, I think Monica Kina she does a decent job with this character, and I think this final sh- this final scene, I really I th- I thought she was pretty badass. I mean, she's not. She's definitely not anywhere near. Uh, most final girls, especially like, you know, Nancy Thompson or, uh, you know, Lori Strode or, yeah, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed uh, this final, Jamie this whole final so showdown. Badass. Yeah. I just, you know, of course I've got some issues with, which we'll talk about later, but I mean, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Like it's, yeah. it's, it is what it's supposed to be like at, at the end of it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Jason, Freddy gets distracted and Jason is able to stick his hand into Freddy and then pull his arm off with the that's got the claw and and then the whole dock gets blown up because you get the epic slow-mo scene of her running down with the two torches (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. so yeah and then they get blown up they get shot out into yeah they get they get (laughs) shot out into the lake I love her face when they realize that it's going to blow up. She's like, oh, shit. Well, that's the thing. So it blows up. Where were they? Because then after they blow up and go into the lake, they're on the dock in front of where the explosion was. So like, where did they? Oh, no, they jumped in the water. That's right. They jumped jumped in the water and then they came out of the water. See, I I, I, I remembered. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I guess they they were underwater, so it protected them. I don't know. I don't know how fire works. I just want to point out this whole time, like that Freddy or Jace is fighting Freddy. He's almost constantly vomiting blood from just getting his <laughs> ass whooped. And yeah, he's fine. So off. they get back on the dock, and then you see just legs, and you're like, "Who's this?" And it, uh, to be honest, I think the first time I ever watched this, I thought it was Jason. 
Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, but then you find out it's Freddy, and he's missing his arm, but he's got the machete, and he looks like he's gonna he's gonna kill him. But then his claw shoots through his chest, and that's Jason's final hurrah as he falls back into the lake, and then Freddy um, falls to his knees, and this is when you get the uh, she picks up the machete. He's like, "Welcome to my world, bitch!" Decapitates yeah. him, and yeah. Then we get the final uh, the final shot of Jason coming out of a very foggy lake with Freddy's head in his hand, in his in his fingerless hand. By the way, <laughs> it grew back. It's fine. Yeah. And you get the little wink from Freddy and Jealous. his little laugh, and then it's over. Jason. Jason, for those of you, we will be talking about this at some point in the future, but Jason is like Gamera. Like, he gets his ass with bad, usually fucked up beyond recognition, but he just goes and naps it off. Shit yep. grows back, and he's fine. He just needs some time to sleep. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the end of Freddy versus Jason. Fire at the end right there. They would have easily been burned. Yeah, probably. So... Let's share our final thoughts on this movie before we get to our comments. Angela, start us off. What did you think? What did you think of Freddy versus Jason? Since this was your first time seeing this movie. I still enjoyed it. I, there was a point where I was like, I know how this is going to end. I called it. I'm like, they're going to both win. Because I was, (laughs) they were fighting on the dock. I'm like, they're gonna both win, right? This is how this is gonna end. So I call I called it. I still enjoyed the movie. Even though I was frustrated with certain things that the whole water thing. It's like one was born in fire and one was born in water and they're such a be, dumb such a dumb line. They're gonna be it scared is. of it. It's a dumb yeah. plot point. Yeah, it was, it was dumb. <laughs> Just let them Duke it out. Give them boxing gloves and let them punch each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do, do it. What's what's the game? Rock'em sock'em robots. Yes, rock'em sock'em robots. Just let them do it. Like that kind of happens. Yet Freddy's head gets knocked I, off. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. somebody's head's gonna pop off. But as the little nitpicky stuff, I I still enjoyed it. Uh, I will, as as much as I have said about this movie, with, of course, we talked about my, my major grievances with, you know, cherry-picking plot points and water stuff, which we've talked about before. It, I, you would think as much as I love this and essentially Jason just getting his ass beat the last fucking, you know, 15, 20, 15 minutes of this movie, just him constantly getting his ass hammered. Uh, but it's fun. I do enjoy this movie. I like watching it. Uh, I've got nostalgia for it. And, uh, not even that. It's just fun. It, mm-hmm. It's it's easily better than a lot of the worst entries in the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. And I'm not saying that bad. That like like oh fuck, this is better than the worst. No, it, it's actually a fun movie. Like I enjoy watching it. Uh, I I don't mind the characters. You got a couple of characters that are shitty. It's just par for the course for these kinds of movies. But I think it's yeah. fun. It's it, enjoy watching. It. It's a quick romp. If you just want people getting iced off, some titties and. Just take out new Trey metal from the early two thousands. What now? Take out Trey and it'd be even better. Well, that's why he gets killed. I think it's his name. I. Trey. It's that's like it. certain names. You're just like, yep. Usually that's yeah, a Travis. shitty character in a movie. Yeah, Travis. That's the one. <laughs> anyway, uh, no offense, Travis is out there. You couldn't pick the name. Somebody picked it for you. Yeah. So, um, but no, it, it, it's a it's a good romp. I recommend it for fans of both franchises. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is uh, watching this. I haven't seen this movie in quite a while. This is, I think, the first time I've seen it. Probably, oof, probably close to ten years now, which is pretty it's crazy. I, to be honest, it, the the Nightmare series has been. It's been a while since I've seen most of the Nightmare movies. Uh, you know, we watched all the the Friday the Thirteenth for our uh, their ranking episode we did a while back. So I'm a lot more refreshed on that franchise, but um. Yeah, this movie is still a lot of fun. Anytime Freddy and Jason are on screen and doing things, it's always great. Yes, the dialogue is has not aged well at all. Some of it is atrocious. Uh, some of yeah. the characters, it's a typical like early 2000s horror movie where the char- there's just so many unlikable characters uh, where most of the time you're just kind of 
like rooting for the two baddies to just fucking eliminate them all. Uh, I think Lori redeems herself at the end. I think she's definitely a character I did not like for about 75% of this movie. And then at the end, I was like, why couldn't we get a character like this earlier? Where I, yeah, she redeems herself. I wish we had Mark more. Will was fine. I think he kind of just disappears in the movie though, towards the end where I think he was more of a prominent character. Um, a lot of the side characters are just useless. They're kind of just cannon fodder. Um, hey, what's the other guy we liked? Mark. The police officer. Oh, police Stubbs. 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 Yeah, yeah. they could have used more of him as Stubbs. well. Yeah. yeah. Like they kept, I feel like they just t- made the wrong decisions by keeping some of like the pointless characters in and the, the more interesting characters out. They eliminate them. Like Stubbs was interesting. Mark was interesting. Will was interesting. And they kind of, they were really, really focused on Lori and her group of friends or like her main group there. Um, I, I kind of like actually I, out of even even earlier characters. I actually kind of liked. I mean, I hated it for her because she just went along with it. But I kind of like uh, Gibbs. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She I, was I mean, fine. She was, yeah, like I felt like had she had a shitty boyfriend. Had, she, yeah, she could have built on that. Obviously, she has issues. Where I'm assuming mm-hmm. she was down on herself, given that she was in a shitty relationship like that. Right. But man, it is what it is. But yeah, Robert England as Freddie. I mean, I love it. I mean, he's he's just so oh, good. God, he is yeah. just he is this character. He has such iconic lines and he's just the way that he portray, like the way he, he just performs as Freddie is just so, so amazing in it. And it sucks. That we'll never get to see that again. Um, but uh, I'm glad we have all those movies to look back on and, and watch him. Uh, I wish they, I wish we could have got the Kane Hodder Jason. I wish we could have got a different version. Jason. I was not the biggest fan of this Jason. I think he was just too slow. And I think when he does action, like when he is swinging that machete around, it is cool, but I do not like the fact that he is like a, he is the turtle and the turtle in the hair. He's just fucking oh do do yeah. do do, and it's just yeah. not my type of Jason that I like to watch. And we've, and we've seen him be plenty fast before, yeah. even in other New Line movies that he, that Jason so. movies, and it's just like and I I this is my issue when you bring in people like I know there's writing, but the director has play on shit. And this is when you bring in people that don't know about the franchise. And I get Mm -hmm. it. Sometimes it's a good idea to add freshness, but that wasn't what was done here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I, you know, it just, it gets me excited to see what we can potentially get. I mean, this is, this movie's 20 years old. This is the last time uh, Robert England played Freddie. We did get the, the nightmare remake, which, I've always been an advocate for. I don't think it's as terrible as most of the internet believes it is, uh, which is fine. You can believe whatever you want. I always was, you know, I don't think it's amazing. It's definitely not one of my favorite remakes. I think the Friday, the Friday, Friday the 13th remake is way better, but yeah. uh, I really enjoyed uh, Jackie or Haley's perf- uh, performance as this new version of Freddie. And I, I can't wait to see what they do with Freddie in the future. Yeah, we know Robert England's not going to come back to do it, but I'm excited to see what they do with that character, and I would love to see these two match up again and get a, a more modern take on this on this battle. Yeah, and as somebody like you know ourselves that are into these long running franchises, like, and we love those characters like Robert England, Kane Hodder, stuff like long running characters. You you got to, re- I mean, you got to eventually they got to be replaced. Yeah, they can't absolutely. do the role forever. Like I know uh, we like them too, but we it just it's yeah. not realistic. Yeah, you know I won't get too much into like the fact that there's just most fans just are like Robert England is Freddy Krueger. I agree, but if you want this character to continue, it needs to change. It needs to be somebody else because Robert England is 72 years old. Yeah. So, or he might even be older than that. I I'm not. He was fifty. He was 55 when he did this movie. He's 76 right now. Yep. There you go. So, like... He's old. Yeah. I mean, he's still able to act, and he's, it's great to see him in movies, but, like, I, I mean... Yeah. We gotta move on, people. We gotta move on. Yep. We have all these movies. I mean, there was eight movies with Freddy in it. Uh, so, you know, you got all those to look back on. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, it, I really like the concept of the of the plot. I like the fact that Freddy needs to regain his power because everybody forgot. I think they could have done more with that. <clears throat> um, the fire and water thing. Yeah, that that whole thing was stupid. We just put yeah, the, the fire, the funny, for it. 
Yeah, the funny thing is, is like the water bothered Jason, but Freddy didn't seem that bothered by fire outside of when he was in real life. He got distracted like, by it, I guess. But like, but he's like, outside of being like a mega damage sponge, you yeah. know, in reality, yeah. like he seemed like he's more concerned, like, oh, this fire's probably gonna hurt less than, oh, I'm so scared. Yeah, like, like, like Jason was portrayed. Yeah. All I could think of was Captain Planet. Sorry. And he was fine in the water at the end of the movie because Jason flew into the water. He came out yeah. and then fell back in. For yeah, nap time continuity. Just out. continuity just wasn't there. That's okay. No. All right. Now that we have given our thoughts on the movie, we are now going to be going to the social medias to talk about the comments that were left. As as you know, every week we post what movie we're going to be covering uh, on the show, and we let you guys comment on you know your thoughts on whatever movie it is. And we got a lot of interaction with this one as well. The last two weeks have been awesome. Um, I love it. Thank you so much. Let's keep this up. Yes, so you, starting on X slash Twitter, our first comment is from our good friend Justin over at Epic Film Guys who says, it's not the movie that we all hoped for, but it's a fun and silly time with some very questionable dialogue choices. 100%. <laughs> yes. Our next one is from at Reels Feels Pod or Reels Feels Podcast, who said, absolutely love this film. It's the showdown we all wanted. Well, almost. Kane Hodder should have been Jason, but that's a different yeah. hill to die on. This movie has laughs. It's meta. It has blood. Kills are fun. This film is pure popcorn. Yep. A uh, friend and patron of the show, Chris or Rudy5453 says, I can't believe it's been 20 years. This movie. Love the soundtrack. A few memorable moments. I'm sure you will hit on them in the pod. I would love to get just one more Robert England Freddy, though. I think we all would, but I just it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Maybe. I mean, I, I would say never, but our next one is from Ad Eyeball Soup, who said, how can I live without you? That song is the first thing that always comes up when I think of this ride of a movie or this ride of a film. I enjoyed it for what it was, though, and realizing that the actor Zach Ward, who played Scott Farkas as the older brother, trips me out. <laughs> uh at classiest witches or witches talking tarot said love everything about this movie to be honest but i'm biased jason was my first slasher and freddie my favorite slasher from amber one of the co-hosts of that podcast thank you our next one is from friend and patron jason or at nerdrovert who said when we actually get freddie versus jason it's fun when they aren't throwing down it's a bit of a slog uh, at Dewey, uh, Dewey Pod Monster just says Jason wins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, at Batman Rye Guy, who says, honestly, I do really enjoy this movie. Sure, it's not the best, but it's really fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's the important part. Remember, movies are fun, dude. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Uh, our next one is at Watch Skip Plus, who says, one of the best sequels for both franchises and the most incredible, iconic, bonkers horror adventure ever committed to celluloid. All hail Shannon and Swift and Ronnie Yu and Shannon and Swift, the two writers of this movie actually liked this post. So nice. hey guys. Hello. <laughs> thank you so if you ever listen to this, thank you. Uh, <laughs> commented on like the shit. Like what if it was some of that was their idea? Like, damn it. Hey, if they want to come on the show and talk about the making of yeah, this absolutely. movie, we will happily uh, we'll have them come on. I would love yes. it. It'd be great. Uh, our next one is from, at J Doe 2983, who said, I ha had the potential to be terrific, but I found it mediocre. But some people love it, which is great. That's what's so awesome about art. You don't have to love every piece, but every piece will always get love. <laughs> what a fucking comment. Bravo. I love it. That's how, that's, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about most opinions. I just like, I just like stirring the pot sometimes. I never I like to cause that. too much drama. I just want to be that guy who stirs the pot. I'm the guy that stirs it too hard sometimes where I <laughs> scrape the bottom of the pot. Yeah, you're like, shit. Ah, oh, oh, such nice. Yeah. Our next one is from at sheep and baloney. I said, still yes! my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> and I will go to my grave saying that a movie that was absolutely everything I wanted it to be and more. Nice. Uh, our next one is from at do underscore you underscore nerd who said fan service come true. We both really enjoyed this and honestly never thought it actually happened. Would have loved hotter as Jason as it seemed more right, but still a great popcorn flick. Now, if we only could get a film, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. By the time that happens, they'll all be in wheelchairs. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, we have two actors who pretty much stated they're not going to be playing those characters anymore. So the only one who would probably do it would be Kane Hodder. Uh, <laughs> uh, next one is from at odd odd pod retro who said just dumb fun. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Yeah. Uh, at bury your bones. 23 says be great to hear your thoughts on this. Well, when you listen to this episode, you're going to know. <laughs> yeah. If you made it this far, you'll, you'll yeah. Uh, at Dean Barry, who just says 20 years, and it's just a gif of a dude going into a box. Yes, <laughs> that. Oh, those are all of our comments on X slash Twitter. Thank you, everybody who commented over there. Now we're going to hop over to Instagram. Our first one is from Give Me Back My Horror Movies, who says, just recorded our episode on this. I was shocked by some of the comments made, and I just responded, yeah, the dialogue hasn't aged well. Uh, so yeah, so make sure to check out uh, Give Me Back My Horror Movies. It's a fantastic podcast. I listen to it every week. They cover a lot of um, you know movies that don't get enough love. So make sure to go over there and check out their channel and check out their Freddy vs. Jason episode when it drops. Yes. Our next one is from Let's Talk Horror Channel. Just said, I legally can say nothing until my four-part uh, Friday the 13th franchise specials arrive. Yeah, uh, there you Understandable. Go. Make sure uh, to follow my brother from the UK, uh, BP from the Let's Talk Horror channel. Uh, he runs a great podcast over there. He uh, has covered some amazing movies, and uh, hopefully one day we can we can we can join him over there. It's it's his breakdowns of some iconic horror movies has been a, a delight to listen to. And our last one on Instagram is from. Our good friend Ashley at the Little by the Fear podcast says, I'm so psyched for this episode, all in caps. <laughs> Hopefully we don't disappoint you, Ashley. Yeah. So, yes, thank you to everyone who commented. Make sure. Uh, yeah. So as I like to say every week, make sure to check at our Insta or all of our social medias. We are like on everything. We're on X, Instagram, threads. Uh, we are now on Blue Sky because I got a code for that, so that's a thing. Just in case Twitter decides to shit the bucket, uh, yeah, you just, you just be invited to that, don't you? Yeah, I got a code. Don't worry, we got a page over there I'm now. Um, so yeah, so I post every the day before we usually record, or whenever I watch the movie, I'll post what we're watching, and uh, yeah, you guys can comment on it. So make sure to uh, follow us and uh, hit the notification bell so you know when we post. And yeah, that's uh, that's all the comments uh, for the week. Now it's time to talk about what we're going to be covering next week. We're going to be covering Dan's pick for our Spooktober favorites. We're going to be talking about, did we say 1956? Correct, sir. The 1956 kaiju film, Rodan. Which is exciting because this will be the oldest movie we have covered on this core show so far. Fuck and you. Dan has stated this is a spook. This is our spooktober favorites. And Dan has stated that this is a horror movie. So yes. at least the beginning. <laughs> I hope Dan, I, I, I really hope it doesn't disappoint. Seconds. That's more than five seconds. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's a no. movie about a fucking massive flying dinosaur. Like it's gotta be, <laughs> it's, it's I'd say it's going to be horror. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's it's fun. It's going to be a good time. I'm always excited to, when Dan brings all the, the these movies I've never seen before. He brought me Day of the Dead in his first year on the show. I can't remember what you do last year. I don't remember what you did last year. I'll have to look. I don't remember what we picked last yeah. year. But we also, I also I'll, you, I'll try to give you different stuff. All, bl bl all, blends, into, all blends in together. <laughs> it's the one that picks stuff that nobody's ever seen. Yeah. I mean, I've seen well, it, but... So you're telling me it's going to be the lowest downloaded episode of the year? Absolutely Again. it is. But a cool but there's going to be killer squeaky toys in it too. So Hell yeah. Keep that in mind. Uh yeah, so where where can people watch that, Dan? Is that on any streaming service right now? Oh, fuck, I don't know. You're supposed to look Listen, it I assume it is. I don't there's no Blu-ray release of it in the United States for anybody ask me. It does not exist. Okay, Probably I'm on not going to look for it on Blu-ray. Yeah, no, sorry. I've been waiting for one forever. See, they always, the problem with Toho. So currently, people, for anyone interested in watching it, it is on Max. Yeah, we'll tell you. It's on Max and it's on Fubo. It's on Plex a, and it's on Freebie. Nice. So thank God for that. So yeah, well, that'll be. <laughs> oh, I know what I, I got a good one for next year, too. 
Uh, but anyway, but we're the, not prob- there yet. the problem with Toho is they always do the Godzilla movies, but they don't ever do their other offshoot properties, which is some with some of their best work in it, I think. So. Yeah, we're excited to uh, hop into that next week. And oh, um, yeah. yeah, so uh, make sure to you can follow us at Dissect That Film on all those social medias I mentioned before. We are also on Patreon. Oh, we have shit. we have a Patreon where we have two tiers. We have one dollar tier, which uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm a little behind on getting episodes out uh, early, but there are uh, you get episodes early. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it's a couple days before the release, but I'm a little behind. But uh, we appreciate all your support with, with that one dollar uh, tier. And then we have our five dollar tier, which we have exclusive Patreon shows where we have the Monster Zone, which is our kaiju uh, show hosted by Dan and Angela where we spin a wheel every month and cover two movies a month this month. Actually, we don't know because this is, th- these are October episodes and w- as of this recording, we haven't figured out our October episodes. So, but yeah, but that's what you get for, for, for those two tiers. So yeah, you want to support the show and help us, uh, you know, pay for some of the services that we, we use for the show and, or to help us raise money to get, you know, better equipment for the show, uh, or use better, uh, uh, streaming services so that maybe the, we can get the audio to sound better in episodes if that's a <laughs> complaint that no one wants to tell me about. I feel like people are like, God, some of the audio is kind of weird, but no one tells me anything. <laughs> they don't want to offend We want feedback, people. We want feedback. Also, you can reach out to us. I never I never plug our email, but if you want to reach out to us with any uh, suggestions on movies you want to see us cover, I can't guarantee when we're going to cover them, but if you have suggestions, I will make a list of movies you suggest. Just email us at dissect that film at gmail.com. Uh, you can you can literally message me on uh, X, Twitter, whatever the fuck you want to call it uh, at dissect that film. You can message me the same thing. Suggestions. Come say hi. All that stuff. Uh, the biggest thing I do want to I always sometimes I forget to mention it, but please, if you listen to us on Apple podcasts, on Spotify, on good pods, on wherever uh, on an app that where you can rate us, if you can give us five stars, please do. Because the more five star ratings we get, the more the higher up we get on the list uh, for podcast. You know, and people we get discovered by more people, and you know we want more people to listen to our show and hopefully like it. And um, yeah, we appreciate yep. all the support. And if you watch us on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We like reading your comments on uh, the movies that we cover. So yeah. There it is. There's all those beautiful plugs. Yeah, the more people that check us out, we get more reviews, so we'll have more kooky comments to read on here. Yes, it's it's, it's always a, it's always a great time. And uh, yeah. as of this recording, we've hit twenty thousand downloads on the show, so that's a pretty awesome mm-hmm. accomplishment. So Fuck I'm, yeah, CK. I'm pumped. So thank you, everybody who listens to the show, supports the show, listens to the show. Even if you don't listen, but you just share the show on Twitter, that's we appreciate that. You know, I know everybody can't listen, but just sharing an episode or whatever it means the world to us. So yeah, make sure to go to your apps and, and leave those ratings. We appreciate you very much. And, uh, all of our links are down in the description, Dan and Angela's links, my links, uh, and all the information for Patreon, and all that stuff. And, um, Oh, also uh, our good friend, Tony from hack the movies. I know he's covering this movie as well. Uh, over at hack the movies with, I think Joe, Joe Lascola from movie dumpster. Well, wearing their beautiful shirt right now. Fucking uh, they're they're going to be co- covering <laughs> uh, Freddy vs. Jason for Friday the 13th. So if it comes out the same day as ours, then you got two amazing episodes you can listen to back to back and listen to yes, some sir. different conversations about Freddy vs. Jason. So Yeah, so I'm assuming you guys already listened to that one and you've come to us second. So mm-hmm. we understand. Yeah. There's a, that's, there's okay. Wait, I, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're not going to we, judge we, you for it. Listen, we got to work to get to that point. You know, they've been around longer. They've done a lot more stuff. We're, you know, we're working up the, we're working up the chain here. Fine. I don't care how many dicks we got to suck. We'll get there. All right, everybody. Next I week, it's that. Rodan for the future. We'll let you know. But until next time, I am Brett Parker. That is Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming. We are Dissected Film, and this has been the Dissected Film Podcast, episode 127. We'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.